Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the URLC4 prelims. Volts here with Mittens to cover this one. And Mittens, we have quite the treat here, an SSL matchup for the prelims. Yeah, I'm excited to see this one. Uh, I'm going to be playing against Cobain next month. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to scope him out a little bit, do a little scouting. Live at scouting from the booth. This is your second time joining me here. And you said it, July 16th is where we are scheduled to see you and Mittens in that SSL division. Your official debut, How uh, you know, obviously a month out. How are you feeling? I'm excited for it. I've been playing a lot of once. I've only played once this season. So, Ow. I mean, it's probably the way to prepare is to only play the game mode, right? So, I mean, I'm excited for it. I'm, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that, so you're better than me. And, uh, you know, you have interest in this match, and then you also have interest in our uh, champ division matchup a little bit later tonight. Yeah, yeah, Danny's going to be playing. She's practicing right now. I'm excited to see her play. I hope she does well, and, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's a big one. Danny Kins in blue screen, of course, in that champ, or excuse me, in that GC division matchup. And then, of course, tonight, URLC 4, it will be Drewski and Basilisk there. I am so ready for that one. But again, we've got a big treat in front of us with some big stakes here. Barney needs a win here in order to stay in this SSL division. If he drops, he's headed to the GC division, and that affects uh, some of the matchups, Mittens, there. It could be potentially be Night Sky versus Derek next go round. It could be Barney versus Derek next go round. So a lot of URLC roster potential matchups happening here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the best thing you can do is win, right? So, you know, exactly. let's see. Let's see how it goes. And that's the biggest goal here today. Again, this is just the prelims. Plenty of more action coming your way after this. Of course, Mustache and Top Gun will be joining me here today. And well, I think we're just about ready. Headed down to the pitch. Cobain's going to be in the blue. Barney's going to be in the orange. This is a best of three series in the prelims. Our first SSL prelim here. And, well, Mittens, uh, do, you, do you have any predictions here? Well, you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta take Cobain winning the series because uh, I'm playing him next, so I got to gas him up, you know. Oh yeah, have to bring the hype. And so down to the pitch we go. And oh, this is an interesting start. What a catch and turn oh, wow. by Cobain here as we can already see the early ball control just doesn't quite have the boost there. This one, a good flick will sneak past Barney there. No boost until midfield, no problem for Cobain. Yeah, that was clean. Honestly, I didn't think he was gonna score. It was a really good fake to start off, but he got a weird pop off that ball off the dribble there. It was a nice shot. Oh, it looked like maybe Barney got a piece of it on the replay. Maybe just not enough, but yet another great kickoff. This one all the way back into the blue box. And oh, Cobain is going to have to start from the back here. Long boom will be just off. Depends on the kick and Barney with a good read. Cobain got a little caught up. Barney, nothing in the tank. This is going to need a friendly oh. bounce and he'll tuck it in the right corner. I thought he missed for a, step and for a second there. My depth perception was a little off. It looked like it was wide, to be honest, but good shot. I thought he might have missed as well. Nothing more frustrating in ones than having no boost here to try to make something happen. But Barney's able oh, yeah. to make it play. 30 seconds in and, well, again, Mittens, you're a, you're a high level player here as we see a kickoff goal. How important is boost management in ones? I mean, it, it's pretty huge, honestly, but it's, it's about the appearance of you having boost. It's about like car language more than anything, because if they think you have boost, that's all that matters, really, honestly, because you can score with no boost. Um, obviously, if you have boost, it's better, but it's mainly about the appearance of, of, of having boost and, and being able to make a play. Well, speaking of making plays, Barney able to turn that 50 aside. He's got good control here. The 45's a little weak, and Cobain will see this one away. He's just faster to this one, and that'll tie our score line. Put that one into the back of the net. Barney was joking just moments ago. He said, someone take a screenshot, I'm winning. And well, you're not winning anymore, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no, he just beat him clean there. It was, a, it was a good challenge by Cobain. So two to two here. We're not even a minute in. Barney's been dominating the kickoffs for the most part, but Cobain might have just found an answer. 12 to play with off kickoff, and he just sends this one in. Barney wasn't ready for him to hit that, and well, he got a good piece of that. Ball. Yeah, there it is. Honestly, Barney, I thought Barney was going to keep going on the kickoffs. He was dominating so far, but uh, Cobain found the answer there. It was clean. 
Robain back in front. He is the heavy favorite for this matchup here. And as we've seen, Barney's already acknowledged that he is aware of the odds, but no mountain too high to climb, but a four to two lead now for Cobain is not exactly the start Barney won. Yeah, it was a pretty even kickoff, but he got a better recovery. He was able to flip right away and Barney kind of side flipped away from the ball. So. You know, they're and pretty even so far. Best of three. Yeah, best of three. Pretty even matchup. The scoreline, of course, not too telling just yet. We still have four minutes of Rocket League left to play. Cobain was looking for creative shots and warm ups, but couldn't quite make that one happen. He's in an awkward spot now. 11 to defend with. Barney looking for the air dribble bump, and Cobain just sticks to the ground and will sneak under that one. He gets his boost taken here, and Barney now with a good fake. Cobain's got nothing, and well, hats off there. That's a great one. Yeah, it was a great, great boost still there by Barney. Um, I was talking about this earlier with uh, with Danny, actually, um, on the air dribble bump. The biggest thing that you may, got to make sure that you do is lift the ball before you go for it. And there he let the ball drop under him, and then it's kind of an easy save. So he kind of got lucky there. It could have been a goal against, for sure. And he's gotten a little bit of coaching as well. Our main event, Basilisk, has been getting coaching from Remy for the past month. So it, look, it looks like we've got multiple coaches in play. And of course, Mittens, you seem to be on the right track here. And Cobain will tap this one in, lead back to two. Yeah, wow, it's, it's a battle so far. I thought Cobain was going to come out a lot stronger. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's got the two goal lead, but um, yeah, I mean, let's see how Barney responds. He's been doing pretty well so far, to be honest. We've barely played a minute at about half of a ones here. So this one is far, far from over. Good kickoff again from Barney. He's got plenty in the tank as well. He accepts the 50, but will lose it to that corner. Barney, good fake, wants to keep this one on the ground. And this is where he catches Cobain a little bit awkward, but the flick is not what he wants. Cobain's turn to go to work and he'll just turn and pop at this one. It's the biggest lead we've seen in this game at six to three. Unfortunate there from Barney. I might have jinxed him a little bit on that one. Uh, it's on me. It's on me, Barney. My bad. <laughs> well, he's definitely not out of this one yet. And, well, just needs a little regain here. And six to three, not the scoreline he's looking for. Cobain starting to figure it out on the kickoffs. So will be awarded the corner boost here. Barney, quick setup. No fake challenge. Only finds Cobain. And that's just enough to knock him off ball here. Might be able to shoot this. He doesn't choose to shoot it. Probably wise. He has no boost. Um, but uh, that's probably a goal. Low boost again, the nemesis of Barney. Here is Cobain. We'll take this one off the top. And that's a really good challenge by Cobain. He knows he has the boost advantage. He knows Barney probably can't climb the ladder to reach that one. And just above the halfway point, game number one threatening to get out of hand. Yeah, honestly there, Barney probably should have just shot it. If he wasn't planning on going back, he probably just should have just tried to take a shot off the wall there. He might have caught him off guard. Good 50 at mid. Will be awarded mid boost, but it doesn't matter. Cobain just going to make it play. I believe he did this on zero. Yeah, clean, clean play. Great 50 there. Um, Cobain's looking solid now. He's, he got the jitters out. You know, he's getting a little warm and uh, he, he's slotting these shots now. It's looking dangerous. So eight to three here, six seconds above the halfway point. Barney's gonna need a couple kickoff goals and some quick regains here. I want this one more pad. He's got 24 now to play with. Shots clean, but better read from Cobain. New. Yeah, I love what he did there. I love what he did there. Uh, Cobain faked the, the squishy save, so it made Barney hesitate, and Barney could have probably scored, but that fake squishy save there, the, uh, the waterfall, however you want to call it, um, really threw him off there. It was really good. So the defensive mechanics for Cobain holds strong and then just another big pop here into the speed flip and he goes right past Barney here and well Cobain's starting to put on a clinic. Yeah, I mean we're on pace for a lot of goals aren't we? Yeah, we are uh, currently on a pace for over 15 goals from Cobain at the moment though I think Barney will get it together on the defensive end here is an uphill fight if he wants to somehow sneak away with game number one. That's a good start for a comeback here as he's awarded corner boost. The 50 will pop straight across. And once again, the defense from Cobain, mighty impressive. Yeah, it was close there. Barney could have scored. Good, good play by Cobain to play to the corner there. He's gonna go this for the double. Might be a waste. Ooh. See if Barney can score this one. Free ball some of the times. These are the most difficult, oh, and he can't so get on top of it. The open net is terrifying, and it doesn't Oh, come no. Off. 
Oh my goodness. Flick. It was a Howard, sir, but it was just off here. And as time dwindles, I mean, this one, again, it's, it's not looking too great for Barney here. He's had a couple opportunities. That's a really good 50. Cobain, a little bit awkward, will be able to scramble back. He's actually got this going the other way. Barney will fend him off, and as we approach the one minute mark, it does appear Cobain will take game number one. Yeah, Barney's gonna need a miracle. Yeah, there's 10 double digits. So Mittens, as as a ones player here, you, you clearly kind of know that this game's over if you're Barney. What do you do looking towards the next game in order to regain? I mean, honestly, like Barney Barney was looking solid at the beginning with the kickoffs. Um, I mean, mainly mainly what like the goals were scored were mistakes, often mistakes. I mean, that's kind of always the thing in ones. I mean, technically every goal is a mistake, but um, a lot of them were really unforced errors that he could definitely clean up on the flicks and certain challenges and just the way that he's moving around the field. Um, maybe try to apply more pressure to Cobain, but maybe not uh, overextend on challenges. Just make it awkward for him. Cobain just trying to buy some time at this point. Has the control. The flick is around, but it's to the side wall, and that will buy Barney some time to grab some pads and get his way back. Good early challenge. We'll turn this one aside. and. Well, again, 30 seconds, you see it on your screen. Cobain wow. adds number 11, but we've known the outcome of this one for a while. Yeah, if you just if you just keep giving him space, he's just gonna he's gonna hit those shots. But um, when he does, the thing that I've noticed when he does go for dribbles and there's more long drawn out plays, um, he does look a bit heavy. So if he does apply apply quick pressure with shadows and stuff like that, might force him into some uh, mistakes for sure. Here we go, Cobain, another big flick. That's a great save from Barney, and he'll need a couple of those here in game number two if he wants to get back into it. But Cobain, feeling good, flip reset, wanted the pancake, will not find it. Oh, that would now Barney. Great. Yeah, Barney just wants one more here. He'll just chuck this one down the pitch. We're headed to game number two, and well, we can break it down all you want, but Cobain just put on a clinic. It'll finish 12 to three. Yeah, wow. Well, I mean, 12 goals, that's tough to do at once. It's tough against an SSL, I mean. Props to Cobain. He killed him. So, series not quite over. We've got two games in front of us. And, yeah, again, we all know new season of Rocket League. Well, Cobain is still an SSL, which is uh, quite impressive this early in the season. On the flip side, Barney is down in GC1, Div 2. I mean, Cobain, again, put on a clinic. He's at an all-time peak in one's last season of 1503. He is uh, no slouch there seeing the shots. It was actually a little bit more in favor of Cobain than I thought on the kickoffs. But again, what's the biggest key? If you had to give, if you could hop into Barney's VC right now, Mittens, and give him one piece of advice really quickly, what would it be? Uh, whenever he takes any sort of slow plays on dribbles, just force, force a shadow right away. Like, if it's in his zone at all, pressure him hard, turn back. Don't even challenge um force him into a mistake because it looks like he's taken a little bit to get set up on dribbles um and that's probably your key to to score a few goals off of uh some missed flicks well we'll see if barney has the stream turned on and yeah i mean cobain played some pretty clean rocket league didn't see too many mistakes out of him barney had a couple which if he cleans up will tighten up this score line and well, maybe we'll see a game at number three here. So as competitors get ready for game number two, we'll get ready here in the booth. Mittens, it's always fun having you here in the booth. I love getting some of the players up here because, again, I'm not too great at this game. So it's always fun having somebody who really is good. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, thank you. I mean, uh, yeah, I could probably get a lot, quite a bit better. But um, yeah, no, <laughs> I, I enjoy casting. I mean, I haven't done it uh, as my second time doing it. Um, yeah, it's fun. I mean, I, I envy you. You're really good at casting, man. Uh, it's well, tough. I appreciate it's tough. It's it. I, I had to be good at something in this game because it definitely isn't playing. So here we go. <laughs> Back down to the pitch. Barney has Cobain awkward. And holy, that is some power behind that flick. This one, though, is headed back the other way. Cobain's on top of it. And, well, that's a missed opportunity for Barney early. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough to see. And Cobain switching to Fennec. I guess he wasn't feeling the octane. Going sweaty, kind of. I like it. <laughs> it's very rare that you see players change when they win a game so handedly. Generally, you do that when you're losing. But if it works, it works. And 17 seconds in, it's a one goal lead for Cobain here, though Barney's threatening off this kickoff, and that's a good beat. We're tied at one. 
Nice, yeah, if Byron's gonna keep doing that. His kickoffs are looking pretty strong, he's just gotta keep it going. See if that might be one of the ways that Barney can counteract some of Cobain's defense here. If he can't get set up off kickoff, well, that might be a recipe for success. We'll meet at midfield one more time, and about as neutral as you can get. Barney just trying to accept the 50 here. Will pop this one away, but he's so low on boost. He's gonna have to work oh. with zero, and he can't quite get around it. That's a huge missed opportunity, and Cobain will be able to slot this one on the other end. Ah, uh, it hurts my soul. You hate to see it, you hate to see it. That is absolutely brutal there. You never want to miss those. And, and Cobain's gonna capitalize, even on low boost, he's just too fast. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You can't give him those. So two to one here. It's a much better start for Barney. That's a really good kickoff. Cobain scrambling for it, will be able to play it at least off his own back wall for now. He's got eight boosts to work with. Barney looking for the demo. That's something we haven't seen at all. Big bump as well, and Cobain will still hit it forward. So that's an unfortunate break. I'm wondering if Barney turns to the physicality mittens. How do you feel about demos and ones? Um, I mean, Ooh. basically, uh, I mean, there it is. I mean, yeah, I was just about to say that. Air dribble bumps uh, are obviously meta. I mean, if you do it properly, it's unguardable. Um, and then, you know, random demos around the field, pick them up when you can, but I wouldn't go forcing demos, I mean, at this rank, anyway. That's a huge air dribble bump there. We saw him go for one earlier, and you pointed out uh, his error that led to the save, but I could definitely see he got under that one there and made sure that Cobain was left with nowhere to go. Had a chance to score this one as well. He'll still be able to score it, and once again, Barney's in the lead. Nice. Yeah, it was really good control off of that. It was a pretty awkward play, and the ball was behind him. It's always hard to control a ball when it's behind you, um, but it was a really good catch. Slotted it quickly, and it was really good. So we saw this score line last time, and it was three to two, and you know, of course, Barney joked that he was in the lead, and then after sure. that, it kind of went downhill. What does he have to do this time to, to maintain this lead? Uh, just keep doing what he's doing, you know? Keep scoring and uh, don't get scored on, you know? It's that simple, right? <laughs> All you gotta do is... That simple, wanna get better Rocket League? Just hit the ball. Easy. Yeah, just hit the but... ball into the hole in the wall, you know what I mean? That's all it is. Oh, yeah. Well, right now he has Cobain pinned in this corner and Cobain doing a good job of preserving boost. He will get that oh, mid, but huge. there's a big demo in rotation. Just got to hit an open net. And, oh, <laughs> Barney made that one a little sketchy, but it will end up in the back of the net. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I mean. When you can just find a demo randomly like that, especially in their end, I mean, you know, you love to see it. So Barney with the biggest lead he's had all series and I mean, he, he would love to see a little bit less time on that clock than three minutes and 19 seconds, but he'll have to make it play. Another good kickoff, another big bump, but Cobain quick on these recoveries. We'll grab corner and, oh, Barney went for the fake and he'll regret that, but Cobain actually turned this one off. It was going to be out of the net off post, but Barney credited with the save here and defense starting to look better. Good pop off the wall. Cobain got greedy and that's yet another open net for Barney. Yeah, great play there. I thought maybe he was going to try to make a, an aerial play off the wall, and um, yeah, that was definitely the, the right play to make there. He switched off ball cam, waited for him to challenge, and chipped it around him. It was really good. So two minutes gone by, a three-goal lead for Barney. If you'd seen game one, you probably wouldn't have believed this was possible in game two. It was 12-3 to three in game number one, but now it's Barney putting on the clinic. Barney wanted a catch and flick, but he doesn't quite find it. He's trying to limit the space of Cobain, but it, he's putting himself in some risky situations right now. Yeah, for sure. It might be just better just to reset there and grab boost, right? I mean, he's staying up with like 15 boost. Probably uh, not the move, but it, all, it almost worked out for him. And the boost advantage for Cobain there, any kind of 50 that was staying in front of him was going to be a goal and he'll get one back here. So five to three in favor of Barney still, and he definitely still has to be feeling much better about this performance, though he's a little bit awkward off kickoff. Good recovery, and he'll be able to turn it to the side. He'd love to find some boost here, though, as Cobain is eating it all up, oh, wow. and he'll put that one into the top right. Yeah, a really good 50 there. He was really quick to that, grabbed the boost, jumped off the wall, it was really quick really good. Cobain now with two straight here, two unanswered. 
from Barney here, and this is what he has to do to protect the lead is limit the roll of Cobain, because if he gets going, we've seen what he can do here. Good kickoff from Barney will afford him mid-boost, and Cobain stayed on this one again. This is a big win for Barney here, and now he's put away another open net, and it's 6-4. to four. Oh, A battle of the 50s. I mean, is that like the last five goals off of 50-50s? I'm pretty sure. I mean, yeah, it's going back and forth. So six four here. Players having a lot of fun with this one, and oh, we still are not at the business end of game number two here. Two minutes and fourteen seconds is an eternity in ones. And man, how hard is it to stay locked in for a complete game of ones? I mean, when it's back and forth like this, it can be pretty tough. Because I mean, especially we're Ooh. we're watching all the replay. What a flick, by the way. That was huge. Oh my. Yeah, huge. He's getting warm on the Fennec, boys. We better watch out here. 91 banger. miles an hour for the 180 flip. 146 powers. That's a banger. Wow. Wow. Uh, but yeah, but yeah no, again, like... we're watching replays here, which in, obviously you're right. ranked. Most players spam, spam your uh, forward button, try to get through these here. So not only are you playing a full game of ones that normally takes about seven to eight minutes, these series take about, or these games, excuse me, take about 10 to 11 minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly what I was gonna say, right? I mean, especially when they're high scoring like this. I mean, yeah, it's you gotta stay focused for sure. It's, it's it can be tough. Oh, Cobain, first mechanical play we've really seen. He'll take a good 50 with Barney. Great recovery oh as well, and Barney, oh, the pre-flip to keep it out, but that was everything he had in the tank. And again, I got a chance oh, to watch challenge. Cobain's warm up. He's got plenty of those mechanics. Hasn't really turned to him, and a good challenge from Barney has this little awkward down in the blue box here. Bad pop out, and he'll just be forced to dump this to the sidewall. Yeah, no, that's exactly what Barney has to do. Just like hover around him, right? The more that he hover around him, like hovers around him, you see in there that he made a couple of mistakes there. Um, if Barney had the boost, he could have maybe uh, taken the ball. But yeah, that's definitely what he has to do. Unfortunate, got the Fennec demo, you know? The Fennec, they just find demos more often. You know, it's, it's I was gonna say, I don't even know if that one was calculated or if it was on a rotation. And either way, Cobain didn't get the best piece of it. He'll be there to tap it in and, well, fresh game, 58 seconds left. And if you're Cobain, this is exactly what, where you want to be. If you're Barney, you would desperately love to find a goal here. Oof, that might be one. He does shoot it. Barney oh. should be able to get that. Oh my, no. That is a tough break there. Barney pre-flipped a little bit too fast. He was out of boost. He tried to keep his momentum and even a little rubber band action there. But Cobain back in front for the first time since the first 30 seconds of this game. And well, it's a place he spent a lot of time in this series. Barney off kickoff, can't quite oh. turn it on. And that's a brutal mistake there, and Cobain's gonna have 100 in the tank to play with. Now it's his turn to make a mistake. Barney's depossessed him, he's trying to get around it, and it's crossbar oh, back out. Cobain will put this one is that in. Wide? No. Oh, is it in? It's oh, it's wide. not in. Oh my goodness, so now it's Cobain's Wait. turn. Barney with the backwards 50 just has to put it on. Yes! Oh, yes. oh gobble it. Keep oh, what are my. we looking at? Oh. oh my goodness, this is. Wow, that is uh, one way to put away an open net. Barney terrified of missing the first one, had to make that so much more complicated. Holy, my heart is jumping out of my skin here. This is insane. Oh, and this is a really good kickoff from Barney. Can't quite get around it. Cobain did get the corner boost. Barney now awkward place to shadow. Cobain faked the 180. It's just off. That's an awkward angle. But at this level, they'll make it look simple. Eight to seven here with 14 seconds left. Yeah, I thought just the way it was going, I thought he was going to mess up. I thought I was just going to go like post out again and then Barney was going to take it the other way. But uh, good shot by Cobain. Definitely not easy shot makes it look a lot easier there. So 14 seconds to play with if you're Barney. You need one goal here. That's a good kickoff. This one's into the back of the net and with 10 seconds left, we're all tied up. This is insane. Are we gonna go to OT or are we gonna get, it's gonna be 9-9 by the time this game ends and it goes to regulation. There is definitely the potential for 9-9 here. I could also see overtime or you know, maybe someone can steal this one near zero seconds. So. Here we go, big kickoff here, and it's towards Cobain. We'll see if he goes for a mechanic. Nope, he'll keep it low. Good challenge from Barney, and it'll afford him one more chance in front of net. Cobain, awkward pop down. Barney will send it to ground. Overtime game here at number two, and 
Oh, this is a big kickoff. Now he wins it here. Is he gonna shoot? He is gonna shoot. He's gonna shoot again. That's oh, it's, it's wide. Off. Oh no, that's it. Oh. Wow. There it is. So Cobain will put it away. The friendly bounce from the post. And well, that was an incredible effort from Barney there, but Cobain finishes it off in overtime. Those kickoffs have been so deadly for both players this series. And well, that will be a 2-0 series win for Cobain. Yeah, that was that was awesome. That last game was insane. Uh, I'm glad I got to watch that. Um, yeah, wow. Barney fought hard. I mean, Cobain fought hard too. Um, but yeah, GG's to both of them. Cobain played insane. Barney played insane. I'm looking forward to playing Cobain next month. So. I was going to get your opinion here. So now you've gotten to see two full games. He ran away with one, but the second one definitely a little bit closer. Uh, how how you feeling? I mean, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Uh, hopefully he runs Fennec and I'll run Fennec and we'll go Fennec versus Fennec and we'll just demo each other the whole time. Works for me. So looking at the final series scores, definitely some things Barney could clean up. Eight total unforced errors there, but he kept it remarkably close for the uh, shots on target. 31 out of Cobain in a two-game series. I mean, that is an onslaught of offense. Yeah, no, that was insane. I mean, 12 goals in the first game for Cobain. How many total in the first game? Uh, 12, 12 for him, three for Barney in game number one. Yeah, so 15 and then uh, 17 what was it? in game two. 17 in game two. I mean, geez, long games, boys. GG's. Indeed. So two offensive two offensive powerhouses there is what we just got to see but that's it for the urlc prelims mittens thank you so much for joining me here it's been a blast having you in the booth again yeah thank you for having me i'm looking forward to the next one and uh yeah i'm looking forward to watching the rest of the event Yep, rest of the event coming right up. And next, it's URLC for Drusy, Drewski excuse me, versus Basilisk coming up right after this. Mustache and the lovely Top Gun will be here with me, so don't go anywhere. Top moments from URLC Showcase. Number 10. A lot more time than when he saw Hungry and Chuck. What a dodge on that demo. Hungry was hungry for that hit. Number nine. Make that initial challenge, and then Esfiro was able to get that little pop up. Fantastic oh. challenge right there. What a great. 50 there. He sees Drewski challenging high. He knows that means he wants to eat the 50 low. And just like that, the RBG sub is up three. Number eight. Yeah, that He's was... be able to tap it out to the side just for now, but Mustache, that's just a rough break. That was unfortunate. Mittens in the air. Not going to be able to touch that. That's even worse, but able to come down on the ball. And I thought the recovery wasn't going to be there. Missed the touch off the backboard, but then later falls down on it to at least hold on. To Number seven. Oh, giving, getting all the time, and Esfira may not be able to make it. He actually does, but that one was a close cause. Uh, I believe it was Esfira who just elected to to retreat from the ball, and there is Ooh. a great touch. Drewski putting it in the back. What an angle here from Drewski. A beautiful read off this. Number six. Back down to the pitch for game number two. He's gonna definitely go for a mechanic here to start us off up. Flip reset into the back of the net. Love to see it from Mitten. Eight seconds in, he's picking up right where he left off. Number five. We still have over half of this game number two to play. He's up for yet another mechanic. Flip reset off the air dribble. He fakes it under Derek. And just like that, it's three to three. Number 
Number four. Mittens is so impressive with his first touch. And he really came off ceiling, turned that into an air dribble, still had his flip. Mittens, great control here, puts it off to the side and now has a two goal lead. Number three. Gets it around Hungry. Can he turn fast enough? Remember, he's in the Fennec this time Ooh. instead of the Octane. Still same hitbox. Tryon has the open net. That was a nasty fake by Tryon right there. Mustache, maybe that was one of the changes. I alluded that he, he might have switched up some game plans. I didn't even notice he was in the Fennec until you pointed it out. Number two. I wouldn't be surprised that maybe a car change or something to just get the mindset in favor for Esfira. You're down two games now. You're wanting to try and win this prize pool for this one as Drewski's going to drop another one. 15 seconds left. This one definitely in favor of him. Remember, ladies and gentlemen. And number one. Both these players look like they're trying to pick up where they left off. He must have have a protractor in the front of that car or something. Flick, oh. beautiful into the top right, that 45 degree flick. Smooches, motherfucker.
Here I'm interested to see how big the mechanics come into play. And as I say, that Drewski up flip reset under, and it's two to one. Fake kickoff coming out from Drewski. He didn't even bother going for it. Drewski has it. The challenge is going to be there, and it is going to fall into the back of the net. Man, my favorite moment from this had to just be Drewski's domination. It was one of the most dominating performances I've seen in ones at that level in a very long time. Uh, I believe it was Asfira who just elected to, to retreat from the ball, and there is Ooh. a great touch. Drewski putting it in the back. Asfra tried to mimic uh, Drewski's play style too much. This is not a if you can't beat him, join him scenario. This is if you can't beat him, do the opposite and stop him. He must have have a protractor in the front of that car or something. The demo, he's only two goals down. Another accurate flick. Unbelievable from Drewski.
I don't think there's a single player in the URLC roster that I don't have a chance of beating. Bass's play style at a honed SSL level is a scary thing. Dude, you're, you're a smart player. A lot of players would just try to shoot this at the net. I've really enjoyed my coaching with Remy. He's got a very analytical approach, which I really appreciate. Like we've gone over some of Jesse's games, kind of looked at some of his tendencies and, and patterns and stuff like that. And then the initial few seconds after he gets it on the front, he's not going to flip right away. Yeah. You have about like two car lengths before he's like fully settled. If someone's trying to settle it, he might have been better off just straight up full sending this. The main goal today is to work on knowing when to challenge. Nice. I love it. You can do whatever you want. Awesome. Get that out of here. Awesome. <laughs> That's his play style. Slow, methodical. Uh, I think he should stick to his roots. It has a good play style. He reminds me of, hey, I'm hungry, but at the SSL level. Solid, it's consistent, and I think he can catch a dub with it. Going into this event, there's going to be a game plan for sure for me. Basilisk is a really good defender, can counterattack quickly. It definitely seems like Juicy is a mechanical player. Definitely someone who's not afraid to go for stuff, you know, in the air or go for the fancy flicks, but he can definitely execute all of it, so it's not just for show. Got to be careful in the air for what I go for. I think focusing on ground play, dribbles, flicks. Just trying to be as consistent as I can with that. Juicy, I know we've played each other in ranks, so I know that you know me a little bit. I know you're a mechanical guy, but don't underestimate me. I'm going to be relying on some IQ plays to hopefully try and balance out the lack of mechanics. Because I know that you're better mechanically, but I don't know. Don't count me out. I think we might have a good matchup. But one thing I want Basilisk to know is I'm always looking for those montage plays. If he gives me too much space, you better watch out. I think I could do it. I think I'm a pretty good player, but I, it's really just down to how well I understand the game of ones and how well I can implement that skill and strategy uh, against these players who probably have way more skill in the game mode than I do. I'd like to think I'm a pretty smart ones player, but when it comes to the competition I'm going to be playing against this season, I'm not sure that I have what it takes to take the win, but I'm going to give it my best. It certainly isn't going to be easy with as talented of a roster we have here at the URLC, but I think by the end of the season, I do have what it takes to become a champion. Definitely a lot of players that I feel like would farm me if we played, but I'm never going to say never. I'm definitely, uh, I think I have the upset potential with a lot of uh, a lot of the players that people might count me out of. So, I mean, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. Honestly, I'm not stressing over it too much. I think I already have a good chance to beat Danikins, and uh, I'm not I'm not gonna stress over it too much. I'm gonna just keep playing twos because that's my main game mode. Uh, might run a little bit of ones, but just just run some twos. That's it. I do have some preparation planned, considering how well Bubba Stu did in the last one driving event. Um, kind of scared, but excited at the same time. I do need to practice being more calm and setting up the play because I do play a lot of threes and rush in when I shouldn't in ones, and I think that's something I definitely have to work on for sure. I don't think I need to do a lot of preparation to play against Danger Taco. I don't think I've ever seen him play ones. The dude is like a solo threes main. In order to prep against blue screen, I think I'm really going to have to get back to ones, but more importantly, eat a pine cone for the match. That's how you get the fiber, that's how you get the protein, that's how you get really everything. The cornerstone of any good esport athlete is eating a good diet, and a pine cone is everything you need. It's something that these younger esport athletes don't really keep in mind, and I really need them to get back to the basics if they really want to succeed. Kind of like me, a non-esport athlete in a professional sense. Basilisk is a really good defender, can counterattack quickly. So with that, I gotta be careful in the air for what I go for. I think focusing on ground play, dribbles, flicks, just trying to be as consistent as I can with that will be a solid game plan and approach. I've really enjoyed my coaching with Remy. He's got a very analytical approach, which I really appreciate. Like we've gone over some of Juicy's games, kind of looked at some of his tendencies and, and patterns and stuff like that. Um, I really like that because I feel like it lets me go into our matchup with a lot more of a strategy on what to focus on. Um, instead of just trying to, you know, go in with no game plan and just try to win, I feel like I have much more of a strategy going into our matchup. Danikins, good luck, but I'm coming for you. I would like to say to Bubba Stu, I've seen you play, and I'm really excited to play against you, and it's going to be a lot of fun. All right, Mr. Taco, you better watch out. I've won me three tacos before, and I always win, so be careful. I think both of us are on the boomer spectrum compared to the average Rocket League 
uh, community or fan or player. And so with that said, I'd like to put them in the retirement home after this one. Juski, I know we've played each other in ranked, so I know that you know me a little bit, and I know that you know that I know who you are. And so I know I know you're a mechanical guy, but don't underestimate me. I'm gonna be relying on some uh, on some on some IQ plays to hopefully try and balance out the lack of mechanics. Because I know that you're better mechanically, but I don't know. Don't count me out. I think we might have a good matchup. So I've heard Basilisk has been working with Remy, studying my playstyle, and I gotta say it's a bit scary. Gonna have to be putting in some extra hours in the upcoming week. Definitely gonna be focusing on consistency because I know any mistakes I make, they're gonna get punished. One last thing before going into this event. Hope it's a fun, exciting series for everyone. But one thing I want Basilisk to know is I'm always looking for those montage plays. If he gives me too much space, you better watch out. Music by Echo. And the main event. Drewski. Versus Vassals. is going on everyone welcome to the urlc live on beckwith park we got the fourth event of urlc season one drewski versus basilisk with your theme holy wolf by anchor we do also have three 50 dollars amazon gift cards to give away between each series so make sure that you stick around for that i am your host top gun 7 and on the commentary booth with me i have the fantastic mustache and volts Volts, take it away, man. Can we just talk about how that production package was? That is the most impressive and honestly my favorite production package that we've seen. And I mean, we could unpack some of the things that were said in there for probably the next 30 minutes if we wanted to. Oh, it, or... I, I love watching all that stuff. Uh, Top Gun, I mean, it, it is fantastic to see and it, it gets me hyped for the event. Yeah, of course. You know, I think it's so funny. You've got all these people coming for each other, but then you got Danger Taco talking about the pine cones. And, and you got Danny Kins with all the wholesomeness. You got Bubba Stew saying, I'm coming for you. And Danny's like, yeah, it's going to be great. I hope it's so much fun. <laughs> and Bubba Stew's like, oh, I'm going to get her, you know, stuff like that. And I think it is so, uh, so funny. What a what a great group of, of people we have tonight for the uh, for this event. Um, for those of you that don't know, we do have a GC division, a champ division, and an SSL division. We do the champ division first, then the GC division, and then the SSL division. Um, I would like to give a quick shout out to the prelims, Cobain versus Barney. Um, we did have Mittens and Volts commentating. So Volts, we did. That go? It was a it was a lot of fun. First off, Mittens is a natural. He told me that was only his second time uh, in the commentary booth. He did a fantastic job, and it's not every day that we get uh, SSL prelim action there. And Cobain put on quite the show in game one. Barney showed some real heart in game two, and I'm not going to lie, I was kind of cheering for him to force game three, but he did come up just short. But again, the competitors did great. Mittens was fantastic in the booth, and Mustache, as always, the prelims lay the foundation for a fantastic night. 21 versus 11. That was the goal differential between the two of them. 21 goals for Cobain by himself. That was a thrilling prelim to say the least. I couldn't believe, and I really, I was rooting for Barney. I thought he had it there at the end, but Cobain with that uh, recovery to put that in in overtime just worked out for them. And uh, it's gonna be interesting to see them play out through the rest of the URLC season. Yeah, of course, and along with that uh, that fantastic series, once again, we do have a few fantastic series tonight. Coming up, we have Bubba Stew and 
Danny can. So what you guys, what you guys think about that? We we saw a little a little bit of competition sounding from Bubba Stew, but Danny Kins kind of going for the more, um, you know, wholesome wholesome vibe. She was definitely going for the more wholesome vibe there. Um, and I think that's I mean that's just Danny though. So you know. I think this is a fantastic uh, start tonight. Two great competitors, two big names, and uh, they're they're pretty equal on the pitch here, Mustache. I wouldn't be surprised when. Uh, you know, after we see all their thoughts on this matchup and we and we roll into the predictions a little bit later, I wouldn't be surprised if this was an even 50-50 split. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of curious on how this one's gonna go. I've, I've, you know me, guys. I always have notes here, and I'm, I'm kind of making my my predictions a little bit more on the fly tonight than I have on typical uh, typical nights. And obviously, we'll go into view predictions here in, in a bit. But you're right. Uh, you know, seeing the wholesomeness out of Danikin, seeing the determination out of Bubba. Who's going to prevail? Obviously, the big question we ask ourselves, but it should be a thrilling matchup. I always love seeing these two players throughout URLC and just on their streams and stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how uh, they play and who can come out on top. But I'm, I'm excited to just get this whole event started. We do have a little bit for you on, on both, which you got to see a preview of just minutes ago. And we're excited for this matchup. Mittens, you think that's the dagger? I think it might be. This one does go the distance, seven to four, the final score here. Technically, I'm 0-1, um, so it means a lot to me. I really want to win in front of a lot of people, simply put. Bubba's do so close. You got to do it because obviously I could not, and that's how you do it. Finally, we knock Mittens off. Something I couldn't do, something four others couldn't do, but finally, he is gone. No, it's going to be Bubba Stu to put the shot on. Kia can't get there. Again, from the other side of the field, that's going to give him an opportunity to pop it over. 80 in the tank as he fell from the wall and gets that. Bubba Stu's got this stuck in the corner. We all know how dangerous the corners can be. Trying to get a good pop, and there it is. The flick just high off, just has to go tap this one in. I wouldn't have expected him to be running through as many players as he is here. Bubba might be able to get this one. Oh, got it. And Mustache, she's got four to play with. A donation comes through, so Nikki oh, will have four lives and she sent Bubba Stew packing. There's a good chance that I might win. Uh, I'm not gonna make any guarantees or anything, but uh, yeah, it's possible. It has been 8,300 hours, probably more actually, that I have put into this game. I do have some preparation planned, considering how well Bubba Stu did in the last one driving event. Finally, I decided I really wanted to put hours in and trying to actually become more mechanical. And it's it's been tough. It's been really tough, you know, because I have uh, my fair share of wins and my fair share of losses. And it's re it really gets to you mentally, you know, when you start losing a bunch in a row because you put so many hours into this game trying to get better just to lose a bunch in a row and stuff like that. You have to be strong in that, in that asset, I guess. I'm not stressing over it too much. I think I already have a good chance to beat Danikins. It would mean so much if I could get one win. At the end of the day, everybody is a threat and a good competitor. I do need to practice being more calm and setting up the play because I do play a lot of threes and rush in when I shouldn't in ones. And I think that's something I definitely have to work on for sure. Bub Stu, I've seen you play, and I'm really excited to play against you, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Yo, Danny Gibbs, good luck, but I'm coming for you on June 18th. Smooches, motherfucker. Oh my, <laughs> you know, um, Bubba's 
Zeus really, he's really going for it there, huh? He's really, he's really wanting this win, huh? We got Dannykins, you know, the not, not total confidence there. And Bubba Stew with full, full confidence. I think we've seen this before on URLC. Um, you guys, this is bound to be an exciting matchup. And once again, as um, stated earlier, we do have three $50 Amazon gift cards to give away. One for every single um, matchup tonight. So how we go about that is you vote in chat for who you think is going to win. And if that person wins, then you have the chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. And that is with every single series. So let's say Dannykins does win uh, this event, right? And you voted for Danny. Then you do have the chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card after the matchup is set up. So make sure that you guys are getting your votes in in chat while us here on the booth are also getting our votes in in chat. This is Sun Out Days Fuel Productions. Who won the series? you know i'm gonna toss it toss it to volts volts what are what are your thoughts on, on the package and and where where are your thoughts on on who's gonna who's gonna take the crown here all right deep breath for everyone and if you're new here we do compete with each other in the booth just as you guys compete in chat to uh for this 50 dollars amazon gift card we compete just for bragging rights here and it's funny, I took a page out of Mustache's book uh, today. I did my research, I brought some notes, I've got my picks pre-planned, and after the promo package, I'm feeling really, really good. Bubba Stu, that's my boy. He eliminated me in last one driving, and so it's only appropriate that I vote for Bubba Stu on this. Mustache, what you got? Oh man, I have been flip-flopping back and forth between these two. I think this one, is probably my hardest prediction of the night. Like, it, 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 and the champ divisions are always the toss up. And if you saw in that promo package, the Danikins fear event, I'm pretty sure I picked Danikins for that one. And she wasn't able to quite pull that win off. So, you know, I, I, I've looked at Danny and, and Popgun has, has kind of explained it. You know, she's, she's coming in here, maybe not as confident, maybe, hey, I, I may win, I may not win. But, you know, I look at that as like, maybe she's a sleeper. Maybe she's just like playing a, a role and she's just gonna come out and dominate. But then Bubba Stu coming in with all the confidence is gonna blow up in his face. Is that ego just not gonna be there on the pitch? It's all easy to talk, but can you perform out there when it's, you know, needed the most? That's the big question. I'm looking at my notes. I have a name circled. Do I want to go with that? Ugh, as I sit here and, and type who I think is going to win this one. Uh, I'm going to do it. Shh, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. I'm going with Danny. I think Danny can do it. I think she's just going to be the sleeper. She's got a 990 in MMR when we check their rank verifications, which is higher than Bubba Stu. She's got mittens behind her. I, I, I hope it works. And I hope what she's been doing to train works out for her. I think she's got the win. Honestly, I know. And I said, I think I said the same exact thing last time. And I know she lost, but I'm going to say it again. Danny plays a lot of Rocket League. <laughs> uh, more than probably anyone else that I know <laughs> plays Rocket League, all right? She is always, always on the grind. And I also, knowing that she's always on the grind and how much she does play, I know that she has a very good mental. So I am also going to vote for Danny here. All right, so two, ver two with Danny, one with Bubba Stu. Volts, is that going to be... Are you going to be able to, to kind of start the night off with a good prediction or can me and Top Gun, you know, kind of take one over you? You know, we, we try not to to go the same route uh, across the board, you know, across the desk, just because where's the fun in that? But you, this one, I still think is the hardest matchup to predict. 
as we watch the player intros, I'm feeling pretty good. Again, I've got a first-hand <laughs> look at Bubba's stew, and as much as I wanted to eliminate my boy Bubba, he got the best of me, and I'm confident in him. I think he's going to be good rolling forward. Uh, chat was popping there. I didn't even get to see where uh, some of these people got to vote at, so I'm super excited to see our final total there, but I'm feeling good. You know, I, I like to go against the curve here, against the uh, tide on this death, so, and uh, we're, we're getting close to tracking down old Top Gun, so might just get their mustache uh, to, to answer your question 64 percent are sitting over there on bubba stew as we get into the next screen it's gonna be 36 percent sitting over there on danikin she is the underdog coming into this one and uh, again i just think she's like the sleeper player like she's just so humble she's like you know if i win great if not oh well whereas bubba stew's like hard up for it but you know is that going to be enough sometimes you can you, you, that mental fortitude to just say hey i'm going to win this hey i'm going to win this hey i'm going to win this can actually backfire yeah and the mittens again you pointed it out the mittens factor i mean again i got to spend two games worth in in, in the booth with him and he's very knowledgeable you can tell he understands this game uh, to a level that again it, it helps you reach that top end ssl especially in once he has a great understanding of the game he really understands what to do and i'm sure i mean if he could teach me what he taught in, in 10, 20 minutes. I can't even imagine how he's been teaching Danny and what she's been able to learn. So we'll see if she can put it into practice and if her own talent can carry her to the win or if Bubba Stew was correct in not being stressed and ooh, almost a big opening goal. And just like that, it can quickly happen. Bubba Stew gonna put this one in the corner as Danny picked up the corner boost waiting for the attack from Bubba. Gets the flick off the crossbar though. Close call, Danny's still alive. She's got 33 in the tank. Not gonna be able to hit that one and that one's gonna roll in off the post. Great placement there by Bubba. Stewie knows Danny's just a little bit awkward there. She left that back post covered. Overflipped just a little bit there. So a great shot from Bubba Stew, and that's a good early lead for him as well. But Mustache, again, is as Mittens and I covered in the prelims. If y'all weren't here, since we watched the replays in URLC, I mean, one's already take seven to eight minutes. It takes about 11 to 12 minutes per game to get through this. You have to stay locked in for the whole five minute on, on the clock. Oh, definitely. You cannot allow your your mental to break down. You've got to make sure you stay with it. And it doesn't matter whether you have the lead by two or three at the end. You know, we all know ones can quickly turn just like this. Danny's going to launch this one from the other side of the pitch. And Bubba Stu giving that go-ahead goal to Danny, tying us all up. You can't allow that to happen against a player like her. Yeah, that is a fantastic shot from her. And I mean, that's an open net scored from your own box there. And Mustache, we all know how difficult. We saw it in the fur in the prelims, how scary it can be. Even when you've mastered this game, it can be to score an open net. So the more you can score, especially in this series, the better off you'll be. Indeed, and there's a great defensive play by Bubba, but Danny might be able to get this turn. She gets the catch, she's got the boost. 30 in the tank for Bubba, nice flick, Bubba not gonna be able to get there in time. And Danny putting the goal to put herself in the lead. This is a great little tail flick there. I mean, Bubba's in decent position to shadow for that with the boost he has and the positioning. He's in a decent spot, but Danny just got the better of him there. 60 miles an hour into the back of the net, and that's how you recover from giving away an early goal. You get two back yourself. Yeah, what a good kickoff. Bubba had 15 in the tank. Danny's going to take Ooh. the boost, making sure that leaves Bubba with nothing. Picks up the other corner. Bubba having to retreat all the way back. So what can he do now? He's just got to wait for the play. Another Ooh. flick coming out from Danny. She is getting nasty with these flicks. Oh, this is a 45 flick now, and she got all of this one again. You can see her turn that car sideways, flicks it right as Bubba's getting there, and that's a three-goal lead now. Like I said, she's the sleeper player. You know, so humble saying, hey, you know, good games. She's that player that would, if, if we were able to, you know, high five at the end of a Rocket League game, she would do it and, and completely mean it. I mean, just so, so, uh, you know, thankful to be able to, to have the opportunity to play. And Bubba is going to be thankful that he's given the opportunity to put this one in the back of the net and decrease that lead. Danny going all the way to the corner, just not able to get back in time. Yeah, I didn't quite calculate that. And you no, know, it actually is a one goal lead here. I was uh, 
was a little bit off on my math there. Mustache, math's never been my special. <laughs> no, casters, we, we can't math. We all know. We, we expect the scoreboard to, to correct it for us. We all know how uh, difficult it can be. And again, oh. these flicks. If Danny is going to do anything, she's just going to say, look, I, if you're giving me the time, the space, the, the wherewithal to get these flicks, I'm going to do them. And Bubba, I mean, look at the speed coming out from these things. 65 miles an hour here, 105 kilometers. I mean, what are these 45 flicks? These are executed to perfection, Mustache, and they, you know, they look simple to uh, most of us common Rocket League players, but this is a, a very high level and necessary mechanic in ones. You have to have good flicks in ones, and Danny is showing she does have those. And I love her, her patience on the defensive side, you know, Bubba really likes to kind of push and, and really pound the, the ball into the back of the net. This one, unfortunately, it, you know, a good play from Bubba to get that by Danny. If you're a Danny fan, you know this one snakes by her. She can't do much with it, but she does have the patience to hold on and wait for Bubba to attack. She was able to get that one save. Of course, Bubba, he's still going to put that pressure on and because of it is able to break down the defense that she did have. We'll see what Bubba turns to here, but the flicks have definitely caught his eye and I have to be wary of them here. He'll love to be on the offensive end. Here is yet another one to end up in the back of the net. This is a good kickoff and a great little little hook shot here from Bubba Stu. So if I'm going to look at this series so far, just what we've seen, you know, we're, we're approaching the halfway point here in game number one of a best of three series. You know, Bubba is failing, and I, I use that word loosely, failing against the flicks from Danny, but then Danny is, is failing in the corners against Bubba. And this one, just a great kickoff from Bubba. So now he's got the lead back in his favor, and Danny's going to have to, you know, see what else, what other plays she has in that playbook to see if what she can do to put herself back on top. Yeah, these kickoff goals are very good for Bubba Stu, and it's a great way to fight back into this one. And still above the halfway mark, five to four. We've been back and forth, and Bubba Stu again just has to limit the room of Danny here. This see, this is the dangerous situation. Must ask. Danny gets mid. Bubba had to go back. Great early challenge while she was settling it, and he'll be rewarded with the goal here. And that's the key. Don't even let her get it on top of her car. You don't have to be threatened by the flicks if you don't let her settle it. Right, that was a good challenge from him. He's starting to realize that that's gonna be her, you know, bread and butter to her attack. She's going to make sure that she, you know, if she's got that time, she's always gonna go for the flick. If Bubba can challenge early, he can stop it from, you know, uh, starting to develop. And then from there, he can just take control like he did on that last goal. So he's got a two goal lead in his favor. We still got two minutes left, plenty of time for Danny to turn this one around, trying to see if a little bit of a, you know, kind of giveaway over to Bubba would cause him to to leave the goal a little bit further and so unfortunately didn't work out in Danny's favor this one might actually fall in off of the crossbar and backboard it goes Danny no boost she's got a challenge quick and does get a little bit of a piece of that with I believe the the wing of the octane that that tall hitbox working out in her favor right there Bubba wanted to bait her in here, but instead she'll get the big clearance here. Can't quite beat, but she gets all of Bubba stew. Fire some much needed time. Bubba, a couple big boost starves here, and now Danny on low boost has to challenge, see if she can recover here. Bubba's burning everything to get to it, and Danny will be able to recover back. Corner boost awaits her, and again, another situation that Bubba doesn't want to find himself in, but Danny let this one get a little bit far away from her. A modified hook shot of sorts, and that will get her within striking distance. Wow, I mean, almost the crossbar. Dangerous, and I thought Bubba might have been able to, you know, leave the goal and get a hit on that. He elects not to to jump, thinks he's got the time to to gain control of that. Danny able to hook that one in and put herself back within one. Bubba, though, has control. Can he get the recovery? No, he is going to go for the corner boost, leave her with 12. He's actually going to take control at least to the midfield point. That's going to put her in an awkward position. She's sitting at 36. Bubba's got control, trying to get that one around. He is going to be able to pick up that corner boost. It really puts her in an awkward position. She may just have to hold on to the possession. Gets it by. He's stuck in midfield. Danny's going to have to go for the corner but not going to be able to set up a doomsie, and that's going to give the opportunity for Bubba Stu to turn this one around. Bubba sees her thinking about that early challenge, but Danny will wait for that one. Played off into the corner. She'll grab corner. Bubba grabs mid, and uh-oh, another flick incoming. What in the world oh. are these flicks? She got all of that one mustache, and it's way too high. 
Oh, but that one's not too high. Bubba going to put that one in. Says, hey, if you can flick, I can flick as well. That's going to be a two goal lead. 22 seconds. Doable, but Danny's going to need a kickoff goal. Yeah, need a kickoff goal. Maybe even a couple here if she wants to get back into this one. And again, 22 seconds and ones is definitely not over yet. That is a fantastic kickoff, though. Bubba just got to grab some boost. He won't be able to originally take the shot here even looks for the demo but Danny now leaking out here's got one chance on the counter attack to score she's got no boost to work with but Bubba doesn't quite know that played it up the wall Bubba will see it to the side mustache and the death timer will end this game Bubba Stu takes game number one once this one hits the ground oh a good showing by both these player Bubba Stu good win right there he was able to claw himself back you know Danny had control of that from the beginning just Bubba Stu started to really run away with it, able to challenge Danny on those flicks, and that really sealed the deal. She wasn't able to, you know, use her her greatest play that she probably has. So now she's gonna have to kind of look and see what she can do. You know, now that Bubba Stu's starting to figure out her flicks, obviously can, she can still use them, but now she's gonna almost have to bait them out and see if she can't, uh, you know, fake the flick. I'd like to see something like that to kind of throw him off guard. Obviously, I know these two players are listening in, so I'm sure she's got more tricks up her sleeve, but Bubba, looking good. He's got to get one more off of her to see if he can't take this series. And Danny has to mix up the kickoff there, Mustache. Uh, almost 70% 70 70 advantage for Bubba Stu there. And again, when you don't necessarily have the ones mechanics like Danny does, uh, kickoff is a great way to level that playing field and swing things back into your way. But. I mean, you can definitely tell that Danny has been practicing and she is uh, ready for this one. But Bubba Stu, one game away now from proving that uh, he was correct to not be overly stressed about this matchup. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's feeling good. You know, definitely when you come in that confident and then you take game one in a best of three, you know, best of threes are tough. So he's obviously feeling good. He, he's, he's definitely in a place where he wants to be Danny. She knew this was going to be a struggle. She's knew, she knew she was going to have to come in and really throw it all out there on the pitch. Still got five more minutes to see what she can do. And ooh, there's a little bit of an awkward kickoff. Danny's just going to be given that goal. Yeah, that's a great start for Danny there. Again, take what you're given. Uh, Bubba Stu messes up his kickoff, and it leaves a wide open net right off start. So one second in, one goal lead for Danny. And yeah, I mean, again, that's that's what you need, Mustache. You, you can't... Uh, can't be nice in these. There's no giving goals back for mistakes or anything like that here. You get punished for every mistake you make. Oh, and there's no mistakes right there. Danny should be able to put this one in. But no Ooh. power, though, puts it on that near post. And probably rightfully so. I thought there was going to be a little bit more finesse behind that. Bubba Stu had nothing in the tank. But he was able to make the defensive play. This one's stuck in the corner. We all know how dangerous the corners can be, especially in ones. You almost have to just kind of back off and see what you can do with it. Almost the challenge going in favor of Danny and falling in the net. Bubba Stew's got control from midfield. Going to come in with about a half a tank full of boost Ooh. off the crossbar. Not going to go in. Bubba's going to have to cut this quick. He still has control, but Danny able to get the recovery to get the clear. Great recovery there. Two decent flick attempts from Bubba. Neither will come off and does a great job to put this one to his side and avoid Danny's dunk here. He won't get enough on this one. And so one minute gone by and our only goal mustache is the mess up one second into this one. Though Danny looking to change it, 45 flick. This time a little bit too low. Bubba was ready for it. I am just so impressed by these, these flick mustaches. You normally don't see these till about, especially at this consistency till about GC1, GC2. Wow, and what a turn right there. I didn't think, you know, look at Bubba. He elects not to go for the flick. I was talking about the fake flicks, thinking that they might come out a little bit more from Danny, but no, Bubba using it to bait out the defender, able to turn on it fast enough and to put that one right in on the post. All tied up, 340. I believe this is the longest we've gone without... Uh, or with only, a, you know, two goals on the board. I thought we'd have, you know, more. And a oh. demo coming out. She should be able to get the recovery of Bubba spawning on that near post. Wow. That's going to be a good thing for Bubba. Unfortunate for Danny, as she needed to get that uh, that goal to really put herself on top. And sometimes those uh, those demos don't really go in your favor, Volts, as you expect the, you hope that the player's going to spawn on that far side. 
Yeah, and that's the only RNG aspect that you ever find in Rocket League is where that spawn is, and Bubba Stu afforded a great one there, but we just missed mid, and Danny settling this one on her hood. The 45 flick we know is coming, and you know it's coming, and you still can't stop it. You know, when you're in a situation like this, Bubba Stu, he's just like, oh my gosh. In fact, let me look at what he had. He, had, he actually had 80 in the tank. So he was good on boost. He really didn't need the corner. He was just in an awkward position and couldn't do much with it. And we just know how dangerous Danny can be with those flicks. So again, the, the, the one shot in her quiver that uh, she loves to use is that flick. And if she's got the opportunity, she's gonna use it. But just like that, Bubba, going to tie us all up and uh, make that a moot point. A yeah, great 50 from Bubba here. Danny left him just a little bit too much room, and Bubba able to connect on the end of that one. Got a great bounce off of ceiling, and just like that, it's 2-2 two to two here. A much more low-scoring game, Mustache. Yeah, I do feel like uh, both these players, you know, Danny especially, being a little bit more methodical. She's not exactly chasing the attack. She's waiting, oh, but that's gonna be unfortunate. Even bounced off the post. She almost could have been able to kind of flick into the net and get the save. Would have been a tall order and a good shot from Bubba. Put himself in the lead. Bubba Stu off kickoff. He found success there in game number one. And in game number two, he's beginning to find the success he's looking for off kickoff. But this one in favor of Danny. 12 boost and a flick incoming. Bubba with nothing able to climb the ladder and turn this one to the side. But Danny will be able to scramble over to the corner and grab some boost. Bubba's got 12. He doesn't use it. Great boost conservation there, Mustache. Oh, that's definitely what you need to do when you are in a situation like that. He's got control. Good bump coming out from Danny. He's going to knock him off his course. She gives her a little bit of a breathing room. Pick up that corner. She is down the goal. Again, going for the flick. Oh. Doesn't quite get it, but maybe that was a planned attack. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out in her favor as Bubba gonna be able to put this one in and put a two goal lead in favor. It was a little bit of ones freestyling there, Mustache. You faked the 45 flick and you know, obviously the goal is to kind of spin and keep it on your hood there. Lost it just a little bit. Danny, but I mean, the confidence to even try something like that tells me she probably has it in her arsenal. Oh, and there's a good kickoff. Can she pick up enough boost pads to get this one around before Bubba is there? And that one off the top of his car going to work out. And sometimes you just have to hope that it does go in your favor. You know the defender's there. Sometimes you just put it on the defender to see if they get the touch. Will it fall in? It does. Back within one she goes. Yeah, Bubba just put himself in a little bit of an awkward situation there. He had only about two thirds of that net covered and he realized he'd have to go backwards to cover that last one third and hats off to Danny. She put it right where he couldn't cover. Tell you what, her kickoff's looking much better here in this game. Agreed. Definitely, uh, you know, she's still down the one goal. She's still able to get some great challenges. Oh, not gonna have it. She doesn't have the angle and that one it was a tall order, but she had to make the attempt. A minute 30 left. Bubba's going to go all the way to his own corner. Tries to go for another flick. Let's get that. Oh, oh what a dunk. What a perfect play. Just kind of knows that Bubba Stu's going to save this. Says, you know what? I just got to make my car as wide as possible. And it's definitely calculated as well. You can see her continue boosting through the flick. She knows there's a chance that she can get the massive dunk, and that she does. So at 119, we're all level, brand new series, and looking much, much better. It looks like she might have had to shake off a couple, couple early game nerves there, mustache here. And she knows her back is against the wall, but she's playing much better now. And hold off this Bubba Stu attack, she'll be able to. She is in a great position right now with momentum. She's just being more patient. She knows that Bubba Stu, oh, and I thought she was gonna get that one. She's gonna have to recover quick. Bubba not able to really get control. He's got the possible hit, but puts it on target, leaves it on the ground. Easy save for Danny. 42 seconds left in regulation. Another great challenge coming out from Bubba, but Danny able to get underneath the car to make sure that he's not able to recover again, slowing down his momentum. That's definitely something you gotta do here in ones. And as we are now past the last 30 seconds, shot off, just gets it by Bubba Stu. In the lead goes Danny with 24 seconds. Can Bubba tie us up? This is a 45 flick from midfield that ends up in the top right corner here. Oh my 
goodness. She got all the power behind that, too. 60 miles an hour mustache, even coming from midfield. That is unbelievable. You can't let her get those flick attempts. You can't let her set those up. Bubba's gonna try and do the exact same thing, though. In fact, fakes the challenge, saying what she would do. She's got control of it. Not gonna be able to come down off the wall and quite get the power needed, but she's got the lead. She doesn't have to do anything. Put this one in for good measure, sending us to game number three. Three seconds. You, it, it, there's no way. I mean, I don't care how good your kickoff goes. Yes, we saw the kickoff goal with the one second at the beginning of the game. I, I will, I don't know, eat an octane <laughs> if we see two goals coming. I will shave my mustache if we see this tie up. Well, now I really want to see if he tied, but with Danny hitting that ball, that's all she had to do. She'll take the six to four win on the heels of her 45 degree flips. I mean, wow, what a performance in game number two. She pulls it out at the end, mustache, and an offensive onslaught for Danny Kins there. The end game has her credited with 15 shots, and well, so do we. 15 in a game of ones. I want to point out, yes, her flicks dangerous I, I don't know i really don't know how else to explain it but look at that kickoff advantage 82 percent kickoff advantage unbelievable she had a 30 percent kickoff advantage in game number one she completely turned it upside down and because of it she was able to be more methodical more patient and get the plays needed to put herself on top i think that was her key to victory and then when you pair that with those flicks whew, what a player out there on the pitch. But Bubba, he is definitely no one to to doubt. So he obviously has the wherewithal to, to potentially win this series. They're all tied up. It's just one game. One game determines it. That's going to be the question. And ha, I know you chose Bubba. I chose Danny. Well, 64% of you guys chose Bubba. 36 going with Danny. This is going to go down to the final second. I mean, I knew this one was going to be a tough one to predict. Oh, yeah, it was almost guaranteed that this one was going three mustache and Danny just put on a clinic on how to play ones. You dominate kickoffs, you dominate possession, and you pour on the offense. But we'll see what Bubba Stew has. He needs to get that kickoff advantage back in his favor. And opening kickoff here, game three from Beckwith Park. He is back on that advantage, but he can't quite capitalize here. That one was off to the right. He's going to have a second chance at redemption here. That one's saved up high. Anything's defense now. Uh, that's the combo you put together, Mustache. Kickoffs, offense, and defense, and she almost has all three working for her right now. Another stat I'm looking at at these two players as we you know, are now into game three, and because of it, it's, it's a tied series. They are literally tied in goals, 11 versus 11 between each other. That's how so close these two players are matched up, and oh, what a challenge. Danny should be able to get there, but I think it's just gonna roll by the net as it does. That's gonna allow Bubba Stu to regain control. That breakaway almost was exactly what Danny needed. A little bit of a wheel lock. Allows her to get the boost. She goes for the flick. Does she try a second attempt? This one's going to bounce into the center, which gives Bubba control. Danny's just going to have to prepare herself for the defensive play. And a demo coming out. Can he recover? Where will she spawn? She spawns on the near post. And Bubba not able to hold on to the control. You can't allow that one to slip by. And now he's low boost. He's low boosted. Danny's got the 45 oh set up. And it's cross far down from just inside midfield this time. I mean, I feel like this should be illegal at this point. You can't keep using this same move over and over again. Uh, yeah. And, and you know what's funny is, as a player, you think, okay, we saw in, in game number one, he started to challenge a little bit sooner. She's almost midfield, sometimes rightfully in midfield. How do you challenge that when you're so far back, you're thinking, okay, do I go up? Do I not go up? She's just got the perfect placement for them all. Oh, it doesn't matter where she's at on the pitch. She can definitely hit them. So it's going to be a situation where do you even not bother challenging and hope that she tries to draw in closer and closer? Danny getting the great save off the backboard. Bubba not going to be able to go up as Danny gets the save and a bounce not going in her favor. Danny sending this to the corner. Bubba got that lucky spawn of mid. It respawned right while he was on top of it, just barely. So he's got plenty in the tank. He grabbed corner as well. Can't sneak around Danny, though, here. And now it's now it's her defense mustache paired with that 45 flick that's holding her the lead. Oh, and just gets by Bubba. Danny 
holding on to now a two goal lead. And I believe she ended with a two goal lead in game number two. Yes, 6 4. But I don't believe uh, the leads have been any higher. You might have to, to correct me if I'm wrong. But nevertheless, you, you notice how we're not getting, you know, the, the rampant goals. We're almost at that halfway point. We're only at two goals. We're getting less and less uh, as, as the series goes on because both players are really starting to figure out what they need to do and having, you know, troubles to get by the defense when they need to. We'll see if Bubba can respond here with a good flick, maybe even a demo here as he tried to mind game Danny. Instead, he just muscles it around. Shot is turned aside and great saves there from Danny. She is getting starved though, but conservation still had 60 plus in the tank. Big flick here and well, she proves she has more than just one type of flick in her arsenal. That's a great one and it's three to nothing. Unbelievable. I believe now the best lead, Bubba getting that little side dodge rather than, you know, a double jump that he was wanting to. So unfortunately, not able to make the clear there. And like you said, a three goal lead in favor of Danny. Looking good. Two minutes approaches. Danny, oh. again, that patience waiting to make the play. Just going to go on the transition. A favorable bounce. She's got control. She's going to set up for a potential another flick. She elects not to go for it, and probably rightfully so, as Bubba wasn't going to challenge that one. But Bubba, with a good break, this should be the momentum boost that he needs as he puts the first one on the board for himself. Took him over three minutes to find goal number one. We'll see if that opens the floodgates here, because with a minute 58, and as you mentioned, that the goals have been coming a little bit slower here in game number three than in past games, but he still has plenty of time to find two here. Oh, you definitely. I mean, I wouldn't even, uh, if, if anybody out there is saying this is a guaranteed win for Danny, I, I have to prove, I have to say no. There's no way. She, she will win this one at last second. Oh, and that one goes out. Or Bubba will come around and turn around just like that. Great challenge, gets the demo. Should be able to put this one in. Back within one is Bubba. And now we have a game on our hands. Accidental demo, but it works out for Bubba. Great wave dash to keep his momentum moving forward there because it was a favorable spawn for Danny. That is one of the best places she could have spawned, but Bubba just too fast on that recovery. And now we're back within one. Oh, and I noticed a little bit of a slower kickoff there. That's going to give Danny the big break she needs. Not able to get the second hit, but it doesn't matter. It falls in. That two goal lead staring Bubba in the face yet again. He thought he was going to be able to, you know, kind of delay that kickoff and regain control, but that challenge, perfect for Danny. Yeah, and that's just how you kill the momentum. Any kind of momentum that Bubba was building is just immediately taken right away from him there by Danny finding that kickoff goal. and. The mountain got a little bit taller yet again. Bubba Stu going to need at least two here. I have a feeling he's probably going to need three at minimum, but that's a great little scoop and shot there from him, and he just can't quite reach it. Oh, and then just good car control. You see Bubba using himself to stay behind the ball. Danny can't see him, doesn't know what he's quite, you know, wanting to do. Expecting Bubba, expecting maybe Danny to challenge. If he, she did, he was going to be able to get the the uh, good break and the recovery from it. Bubba trying to get the bump on Danny right there. Not going to be able to do so. She's got the full boost. Bubba might have the control. Not quite as this, you know, negates down in the midfield, but Bubba able to get a catch and Danny a little awkward here on the defensive side though able to get control and now Bubba's gonna have to retreat. Uh oh we've seen it so many times here it comes again and he still can't save it that has to be one of the most frustrating things to play against Mustache I mean we can see it coming he clearly knows what's coming everybody watching knows what Danny's about to do and he cannot stop it. I feel like and believe me I am not a, a person to coach ones. But when you're seeing that happen, I'm seeing it from the outside looking in, he's retreating all the way back. With Danny, you can't. It gives her the time to regain control and set up those flicks. And then from there, he's so far back, he, he's giving all the time and space for her to really control the pace and what she's gonna do with the ball. And because of it, it's an easy goal for her. For, for her. So I, I almost feel like those are, you know, errors on his side just by giving him so much control that she, it's an easy goal, but now this one could be the easy goal for Bubba off the backboard. Doesn't have to do anything fancy, puts it in the back, 20 seconds left. Oh, it's going to be a tight, tight 20 seconds here is I mean, this is going to feel like an eternity for Danny and a 
a blink of an eye for Bubba here because he's going to want to try to put this one away quickly and maybe even steal this one in regulation. And then, of course, Danny would love to just play keep away here for our final 20 seconds. Uh oh, Bubba went for mid here. Danny, zero boost, just has to get it on her car and she'll be able to walk it in. That's a mistake. Wow, and it just rolls. Yeah, when it's. Uh, yeah, that, that's just an error. I mean, there, there's no other way to look at it, Bubba. You can't, he, he can't go for that midfield when it's rolling towards your corner or, or anywhere on your half. I mean, you just have to hope that you can pick up as many mini pads as possible to get there in time to make the save. Nine seconds left, two goal lead. I don't believe he's gonna be able to get the tying goals needed. There is one in the air. Danny's gonna drop this one down. Danny looking to take this series and rightfully so. A little bit methodical, those flicks, the kickoffs working in her favor. Again, 63% kickoff advantage in this particular game. She's able to take the series. Congratulations to Danny. There she overcomes dropping game number one. And I mean, again, she just, she turns it on. That's, that's incredible. And mustache, I, I don't know that I've ever seen someone at the champ level have a true mastery of any mechanic in this game especially a 45 flick, but Danny has clearly mastered that mechanic. Right, that, that, you're right. Of all mechanics, we, you know, we all know, we all play the game, we all, you know, fans of it in some way, shape, or form, we all try to focus on different things that make us good and unique at this, at this particular game. You see people going for ceiling shots, musty flicks, uh, whatever. She has perfected the 45, she's just perfected flicks as a whole. It doesn't matter what type, what angle, what she's doing with it, she's just perfected them and it works and it's perfect. And you know, that's just her by herself here out on the pitch. I, I believe she's, uh, you know, plays the other game modes a little bit more often than ones. Try having a teammate or two behind you with that. That would, would love to have a teammate that was just perfect at flicks you know what stay on the ground get the flicks i'll go in the air do whatever uh, just a ggs from her and bubba stew you know he played his heart out he kept it close it was a thrilling series all the way down to the end but uh danny coming out that 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 sleeper player i was talking about man you know she's so humble she's just like oh you know ggs uh thanks and and you know bubba in, in game chat said hey you you bald yeah, and I think she I think she knew she had a couple new tricks in her bag there. So uh, you were indeed correct, Mustache. And, you know, the third member of our team was also <laughs> correct. So let's bring Top Gun back in here uh, and get her thoughts on how this went. Honestly, I like I've played with Danny and I've watched her play a lot. Um, and, you know, we saw the games against Fear a while back. And man, she's got some new tricks underneath her belt. Um, but you guys, you know what that means. If you voted for Danny, you now have the chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. See who wins that. Here is Dynamic D's prize winner. I was gonna be like, this is rigged. There's no way. Yeah, I know. He won he won one just not too long ago. He almost he almost caught another one. Um, congratulations to the winner. Exclamation point claim in chat to claim your $50 Amazon gift card. Um we do have a couple more series to go. We uh have Blue Screen versus the Danger Taco for the GC division coming up next where once again you'll have another opportunity to win a $50 Amazon gift card so don't go anywhere
Hello, this is Mittens GG, a content creator and streamer for the URLC, and today I've received my care recorder. You know, I was approached about this, and I seen the pictures, and I seen some videos of it being used. I was blown away, like, I was dumbfounded of how this could work as a keyboard. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay. This is the care recorder map. By default, mapped to these keys that you see here, right? Oh. Here we go. Oh my goodness, look at it. Oh my goodness. So many joysticks. She. So yeah, two big ones and 16 smaller ones. From what I can see, every single piece is a joystick, which is very interesting. And then also these right here and everything, it at first seems a little intimidating because there's a lot and it can go in four directions, I believe. There's two cables connected in here and then a bar. And I'm assuming that you can remove this here because I have seen on the videos, they spread this apart. So you can remove this if you want to. I believe you'd be able to like separate these and then spray the space it out how you would like, right? To make it more efficient. It's crazy because like you, you could probably use this device in a way that you don't even need a mouse, right? I don't know if this talks about, yeah, look at that, mouse control. And it has everything. So like up would be P here, right would be H, left would be F, down would be D. But apparently these are all customizable and everything like that as well, which is really cool. All of your fingers and your thumbs are ready to press these three. Your fingers are all in here. Like, they really went all out in terms of ergonomics. I want to know how sturdy is it? How long is it going to take for me to break one of these things by just playing the game? According to what I've read, it is extremely sturdy. And I can tell you right now, it feels extremely sturdy. It feels like I have to want to break this to break it. That's how it feels right now. But then, you know, obviously with all the joysticks makes it look insane. But yeah, it's super, super comfortable, actually. It fits right in the palm of my hand, too. Like, I just, they just lay right on the joysticks. It's really nice. You can basically never take your hands out of this device and do whatever it is that you normally do on the computer way faster and way more efficient. This is, this is insane. For the gaming applications as well, you could macro certain movements in games and, and, and uh, add actions to it, right? So you can move somewhere and then maybe, you know, shoot a gun or whatever, right? I think at first glance, people might not realize the potential that this thing has for Rocket League. So allow me to demonstrate Let's talk about a basic Rocket League mechanic, like a half flip, for instance. Basically, you have to hold down on your analog stick, and then you double tap your jump button, so you could do a, a backwards dodge. And then you have to 
cancel the flip. I think the way that I'll start off trying to learn it is basically just, you know, trying to pick up, you know, some words or some phrases, right? Just like very simple typing stuff. Because you have to move your joystick up and down without accidentally moving it, not ever so slightly to the left or to the right, you know. So how much control do you really have with your thumb? Well, obviously the pros have a ton of control. What if we bind this left stick here to instead of going in all four directions, what if we were to bind this to just go left and right? The potential with this is that you can type words at one time um, or phrases or multiple letters at one time, right? And then maybe use your index finger to go up and down. Of course, at first, anything's hard to learn and I am, I'm really excited to try this out. Basically, once you get the muscle memory down to do this, it's a lot easier than having to like move this around making sure that you don't accidentally move it left and right. Yeah, wow, that is insane. Look at that. Look at this thing and think about it. Just think about this in Rocket League, right? You can bind every single one of these in four different ways. Think about that. Think about what that means for Rocket League. So the potential is, is, is really, really high with this. And I'm really excited to start using it. Yeah, I can't wait to get started. If you are interested in going through this experience with us, you actually can get this for a 10% discount by just making sure that you enter promo code URLC at checkout in the Caracorder store. Don't forget that. We would love to see the videos that you guys post. Please tag us if you guys do. If anybody buys a Caracorder and you're putting out content out there, please tag us so we can see what you're doing with this thing. Thank you to Caracorder for sending this out for me. And uh, yeah, looking forward to using it. Thank you very much. This could potentially become the new meta for Rocket League, Caracorder. Mark my words, by the end of this season, we're gonna prove it. Type at the speed of thought with Caracorder. Dynamic D's game changer with Remy Bubba Stu fought hard and had a good first game, but after game one it all fell apart for him where Danny had about 70% kickoff advantage I would say in both games where kickoffs were complete domination along with these perfect, look at that, bar down 45 degree flicks. I mean she was doing it more than consistently with the flicks. Bubba didn't know what to do. I would say you got a shadow close and then try to read it off the flick, you know, go up for a quick aerial on it. But Danny was just, you know, breaking, she was raking the goals in and Bubba couldn't keep up with the flicks. That's what got her the dub, plus that error at the end. And that was Dynamic D's Game Changer. Welcome back, everyone, after that exciting series between Bubba Stu and Dannykins. Um, you know, honestly, I did not know that she was gonna she was gonna pull those uh, 45s out. I, I think they're really hard to uh, to perfect. I personally play a lot of Rocket League and my flicks are absolutely terrible. Um, it would take me a long time to perfect those. And we did see her play against Fear previously where those did not seem to be in her in her wheelhouse, but I think if she plays once, um, I think those are definitely gonna be, you know, something to use and will help her rank up even even further. Who knows? Maybe she's gonna end up in a GC division uh, with those 45 degree flicks. I would definitely, definitely have to agree. I mean, again, uh, we, we figured Remy's Game Changer would probably be one of the flicks. The question was which one? I mean, must as you joked about between breaks going and counting just how many she had. I mean, you could have picked any of them because they were all so clear. Oh, you're right. I, I want to go back through. I, I kind of jokingly said in the chat, you know, Danny, I believe you had 85% accuracy. I don't think I'm wrong. In fact, well, no, I do feel I'm wrong. I think she got was more accurate than that. I mean, uh, almost all of them. I can only count three just thinking back of like, okay, she didn't hit that one. And maybe it was because of a challenge or maybe she just didn't quite get the flick. Other than that, all all in the net. And pretty much majority of her goals in each game. So yes, dangerous uh, repertoire to say the least. And yeah, I, I would 
wouldn't doubt to see her, you know, move up and get into the GC ranks uh, here in RLC. Yeah, of course, um, we do have to give a quick mention to our partners, uh, Care Quarter, you guys. Make sure you use the promo code URLC for a 10% discount on your purchase. We are also, every single event, um, pairing with a band uh, that we incorporate into our event. Uh, this band, or rather this event, we are paired with uh, Anchor. And so that is all their covers, their music, so on and so forth. That is what's being played uh, on the breaks. That is what you heard earlier. Um, we do have a band man over here, Volts, to give us all the info um, on the on the bands of Volts. Oh yeah, and Stone just keeps picking our producer, just keeps picking bands that I love. Anchor is a metal rock cover band. They are verified on Spotify, which is pretty hard to do as a cover band, but they're verified on Spotify. You can find them at Anchor with a K, and then again, that is one of their unique mantras there, but you can find them on YouTube at Anchor, you can find them on Spotify. Uh, they have a cover tour coming up as well, so if you're interested in seeing them, see if they're coming to a city near you, and if you know, even if they're not, if they're within uh, within a reasonable drive, I would highly encourage you to check them out. They're a fantastic band. Uh, we thank them so much for letting us use their music tonight. Uh, it's provided a great theme. It was part of the incredible promo package, and you guys will hear some more songs uh, as the night moves on. Yes, of course. Um, however, we do have the GC division next between Blue Screen and the Danger Taco. Once again, chat. If you guys vote for the winner of this upcoming series, then you do get a chance to win a $50 Amazon gift card. So as we vote, um, you guys make sure that you guys get your votes in so that you have that opportunity. This is Sinai Day's Guild Productions. Who will win the series? I know that Volt started off last time and you know, maybe I'll start off the SSL division, but I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to Mustache this time for for him to start off, and we'll just we'll just go across the board here. All right, so this one I, I kind of flip flopped a few times and everything like that. Not as much as I did for for the the champ division, but uh, obviously Blue Screen, he's been here in URLC, and so has Danger Taco as well. I believe he's done a prelim match, uh, and you know both great players blue screen uh you know has been around for a while i do want to say you know this weekend is father's day blue screen being a father i am myself a father so i gotta big say a big uh, you know happy father's day to him um th you know this one is interesting i'm going back and forth i'm looking at it but i do feel it will be blue screen that will win this one just because he he plays it more uh, you know danger taco he's a fantastic player fantastic caster i love seeing him on the broadcast i love lurking in his stream but he doesn't play ones enough and i think he knows that i thought about going to get a pine cone to see if that would help me go for for danger taco but i don't think it will i do think the blue screen sorry danger i, I just sorry I, I know i know you would it, it, going against a fellow caster, but I got to go with blue screen and and uh, the the boomer daddy's gonna go, gonna come out here and come out with that win. Make All mine right, quick. Well, oh, I was sorry, gonna say sorry, I'm, gonna sorry, keep Volts, it, I'm gonna keep it quick here, just okay, and okay, I have to do it because mustache because mustache said that he's going against a fellow caster. I could never do that. Taco <laughs> rides in the booth with up with us, so I'm gonna ride with him on the pitch. I'm going with. That. I mean, listen. I was gonna go with Danger Taco simply because he ate his pine cone. He's he said he he said he ate the pine cone and, and that's enough. And you know, the that's I, I don't know, that's enough for me for the for the vote, honestly. Um no, I do think it's gonna be a very exciting matchup um, between these two wonderful players. I've watched them both play, I've been to both their streams. Um they are fantastic. Mustache did point out that one player in particular it does play a lot more ones um but i'm i'm trusting the pine cone strat here i've got to i've got to, i feel i feel like i have to i feel like it's so out there we just got to go for the pine cone strat got to do it if if yeah. did i no i don't want to i don't want to make that bet i'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it down. i'm gonna keep it down Oh, they, they man, cannot... I this way. If the pinecone strat works, I, I'm not saying I'm gonna have to try it, but I, I might have to try it. 
<laughs> I was Might gonna, be considered, yep. <laughs> I was going to say, I will go hunt for a pine cone if he's able to pull this win off. But we got two of you guys going for Danger Taco. I am being the lone uh, person here on the desk going for blue screen. I saw blue screen in chat saying, hey, you know, don't vote for me, casters. I don't want the caster curse. I'm sorry, blue screen. I got to do it. I mean, I'm looking at the MMR between these two players. Uh, you're definitely the heavy favorite in this particular game mode, but you know, will that come and be presented out here on the pitch? That's, you know, a question that we are getting ready to hopefully find the answer here to folks. Yeah, this is going to be a big matchup here. Uh, you know, we'll see how much one's experience uh, or the lack of, I should say, for the danger taco comes into play here. But I don't know. I mean, I, I love what Blue Screen said. He's been 1v3 against tacos before and he always wins. <laughs> but I don't know. I just feel like I feel like this might be a little bit too much for him here. He clearly prepared well for the event and only time will tell. Only time on the pitch will tell uh, what we are in store for. I'm excited to see if the danger taco does want to take it to the air and maybe go for some of those more mechanical plays uh, you know both our competitors before this matchup did choose to stick to the ground a little bit more and i know blue screen will probably want to do the same so i'm interested to see if uh, taco tries to meet him down on the pitch or if they you know they take to the skies 49 percent to 51 percent wow. taco taking it wow unbelievable i didn't think it'd be this close um you know <sighs> Maybe it will be that close on the pitch. Again, I, I again, I love to lurk in Taco streams. Uh, you know, I always, I love his banter. I love his his charisma that he brings to the screen, whether it's on his stream or whether he's on the broadcast. He's fantastic to listen to, and I love you know his TikToks and stuff like that. But I have to go. You know, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the season and viewer predictions. And you know, you said it yourself. We we you know combat each other uh, on our predictions and everything like that. I've got to be a little bit more methodical. So I got to go statistically with the better option. And I fear, I, I feel, I'm sorry, it is blue screen. And and I, I guess it could be proven wrong, Volt. We will see if the stats will want to line up in your favor or if they have misled you and guided you down the wrong path here. So <laughs> players are down do. to the pit. We're hanging out in the booth. Danger Taco is going to be in the orange. Blue screen will be in the blue appropriately, and we are underway. Game number one of another best of three in our grand champ division. Oh. <laughs> and the bump coming out. Look at that. So, you know, last series we saw Bubba Stu and Danny Kins and, you know, the da the corners are dangerous. Blue screen expecting he's got to just get the save and Taco saying no. Get off the pitch. I need this goal. Early one for him. Yeah, just go straight through blue screen there, erasing him from the pitch. And it's hard to play defense when you are not even on the pitch. Car parts everywhere. 1-0 lead and blue screen. Taking the arrow here does have good control, good shadow from Danger Taco, and Blue Screen left his car in a really good spot for that challenge. Danger Taco is fast. He is all over Blue Screen right now, and it's a good little chip over here. Going to force Blue Screen to retreat. Good early challenge, though, and back and forth in the midfield we go here, and no one in the bumper tip kept him grounded and almost got a Goomba stomp of sorts there, Mustache. He wanted to. He was looking for him. You could tell, but Danger Taco just kind of stopped in his tracks. He does get a favorable bounce. Oh. He's not going to be able to recover, though. It bounced a little bit further. Did bounce center, but not able to get to the ball. It allows Blue Screen to kind of regain control. He goes for a flick. We saw how perfect those were in the last series. Not quite in favor here for Blue Screen. And Blue Screen cutting the wrong way off of the backboard and post it goes. And Blue Screen getting a lucky break. Danger Taco not able to come out with the accuracy needed on that one. He's just going to go for the bump. Gets it, but now a quick save. And that's going to be unfortunate for Blue Screen. You could see Danger Taco trying to bait out Blue Screen into doing something. He hit him with not one, but two fake challenges. And by that time, Blue Screen was just too close to the net. There he can't keep that ball below the crossbar despite finding the bump. And well, Danger Taco is going to be able to walk that in the other direction. Two goal lead in favor and the fake kickoff coming out from Taco as he's going to go for that corner boost. Blue Screen picking up the midfield. Right now, the pace of the game in favor of Danger Taco. He's going to take it all the way to the corner. 
got control of it. Blue screen just trying to see what he can do up in shadow defense. Going to be able to get a quick turn. Can't do much with it. This is where the methodical play comes out. And Danger Taco with a quick challenge. Going to at least take the possession away. Give him some time. Blue screen taken off the pitch for his efforts. And that allows Danger Taco to set up, see what he can do. The mind games right now are prevalent, and Danger Taco is getting the best of blue screen as of right now. But I mean, things can definitely change. It's only a two goal lead here. We got three minutes of play left. Danger Taco going to try to recover here. He knows he's not getting back to this one. Blue screen will put away his first, and he's on the board. Yeah, and you know, Taco, he's got the two goal lead, so he's allowed to give this one away you know again that may be the wrong choice of words but he tries to get the challenge not able to recover knows hey i'm not going to get to it i just have to let him get this one and see if i can't just get something off the kickoff and like so he does he takes it to the corner can he come around for the doomsday might have the opportunity blue screen is there to get the save so close just took a little bit too much time to set that one up Ta uh, taco going to take it to the corner this blue screen's got control and oh. gets it by Taco, and that one's just gonna roll in. Hey, the slow goals will work. Blue screen tying us up. Yeah, he just snuck it past him here. And a little, you know, I don't think blue screen uh, wanted Danger Taco to know that he had about 15 in the tank and a quick turn and pop will get the job done there. Taco just let that one get a little bit too far away from him, handed it right back to blue screen. I know we wanted to bait out a challenge there, but you have to keep it close to you just like that. That is a great response from Danger Tacos. We are now under the halfway point. Yeah, you definitely, uh, when you have a goal roll by like that, you definitely want to put the momentum back in your favor. Good kickoff to come out from Danger Taco. Easy goal for himself, and now he's got the lead back. If now that halfway point, we see the exact same thing happen for Blue Screen, and just like that, a flip of a switch, we're all tied up yet again, Volt. If we're going back and forth here, Mustache, as expected, because again, we, we knew Blue Screen had the more uh, the more time and grind in a ones, and then we also knew that Danger Taco is capable of great things, especially, I mean, he has grinded some other game modes, almost a 1900 peak in threes. So he is uh, he is getting up there in that rank. I believe he was just four. No, he actually all peaked all the way at 1921, and that's goal number four, and so, Mustache, while he might not play a lot of ones, when you get up in that upper echelon and into that SSL range of other game modes, you face a lot of people that are talented and speedy here. And he, and on that one, he's just faster than blue screen. Right. I mean, you know, ones is definitely a good game mode to to learn what mistakes you have, see if you can't can't, can't correct them because obviously there's nobody else to blame but yourself. But you're right, when you're in those, you know, higher ranks and twos and threes, you are bound to pick up certain things. And obviously you can't allow, or you can't say that those don't mean anything here, even in a ones and a good bump, but it doesn't work. Blue screen able to recover. He's got control. Can he get this by? Just not in the nick of time. Taco on the transition, gonna send this all the way down. And good awareness from Taco to get the speedy recovery and get the goal. Oh, and what a recovery attempt by Blue Screen. Squishy's out of net, uses the flip. I mean, that's as fast as he could get back and just not fast enough there. So Danger Taco with now a two goal lead. He's definitely gotta be liking where he's sitting and Blue Screen trying to bury this bottom right. It'll kick straight up there. Brutal bounce for Blue Screen. Here is now Danger Taco with a lot of time and space. Blue Screen quickly closing down. We'll see the 50 go straight up. Danger Taco, half flip challenge here. It's about as neutral as can be, and he'll also lose the corner boost here. So a good little mental battle and 50 battle won by Blue Screen, but he just handed it back to Taco, but the demo from behind, a little back check action there. Yeah, he needed to get that demo. That was going to be a goal for Danger Taco. You can't allow these to go in. Ooh. and. Taco just not really in the right position. His car, you know, facing away from the ball and good goal from Blue Screen. But yeah, Taco throw the uh, the OMG up after the demo. But yeah, Blue Screen, he had to take him off the pitch. Otherwise, that was going to kind of snowball away from him. And then a great textbook hook shot there from Blue Screen. Will get him within one. He also wins mid off a of bump here. Danger Taco will bait out this one into the corner and Quick little pop here, low boost, but he's got at least a little bit of possession. Mid just spawned, but instead he'll elect to pop this one. High force blue screen up, who just burned all his boost, and now the low boost situation for blue screen. 
Yeah, no, oh, but that's not oh, going to wow. work out. You can't allow that to bounce center. And luckily for Taco, blue screen not able to put too much uh, accuracy behind that as it went to the opposite corner. So that gave Taco the ability to to make the play. And this one could be a good transition for blue screen. He's just got to put some power behind. He had no boost and that bounce didn't help. And Taco able to get the save. So yet another break for Taco as he's able to dodge anything that really blue screen is throwing at the net and just good defensive uh -oh. plays to come out from Taco. That could have been game there, but instead blue screen gonna have one more attacking opportunity. Back to his own corner he goes. Bold challenge by Taco on the wall. Now blue screen has to get it done on zero seconds. Taco half flip challenge with a big pop and heel. Uh -oh. Ooh, just let it drop there. I thought it originally caught ground, but either way it will go final. GG's in game number one. Danger Taco takes it. Yes, and then, you know, looking at the score line, I do feel like Danger Taco did have a little bit of, you know, a little bit more control in this particular game than Blue Screen. I feel like there were a few mistakes that Blue Screen made, not saying that Taco didn't make, you know, some as well, but I feel like there were a lot more errors. And as you kind of look at the stats, you can kind of see, you know, unforced errors coming out uh, from Taco and Blue Screen. One for Blue Screen, two for Taco. 60% kickoff advantage is another thing that I feel like Taco was doing a little bit better on. He was able to kind of control, uh, you know, how each kind of volley worked out between the two of them. And and the game was close, the Volts, but uh, Blue Screen going to have to, you know, kind of work on that accuracy as a few shots I definitely feel like he needed to get in just weren't quite on target. Yeah, he got some unfortunate bounces as well, but he also made a couple really good saves on the back end that come from his time spent playing ones. They're shots you don't normally see in other game modes, but you see a lot in one. So he's able to keep it manageable despite, as you said, not scoring some offensive opportunities that we know he's capable of putting in. So as we move back down, the pine cone has got Danger Taco game number one. I wonder if he ate another one between games. I guess we'll find out if he wins game number two here, but from back with Park, it's time to answer uh, some of the more interesting questions here at the URLC. I'm going to have to ask him, uh, what's the recipe for a good pine cone? Does, it, does he smoke it on a grill? What, what's, what, what is the key to the pine, pine cone uh, dessert, if you will? And Taco going to put one in right off the kickoff yet again, four seconds in. And we see this first one on the board. Again. I mean, just, just muscles through blue screen there. Apparently, it's like eating your Wheaties mustache, except uh, you're eating uh, you're eating pine cones. It just gives you that drink food. So this one in the corner, blue screen. Gonna wait for it. Taco. Actually, gonna come in, and that bounce not gonna be what Taco Ooh. wanted to see. And there you have it, blue screen able to put the tying goal in, and we are definitely quite a, a game on our hands. Taco just not able to get the clear wanted. That's a great shot there. Friendly bounce, and you know, we talked about it. Uh, Blue Screen didn't get some of the friendly bounces in game number one, and now here in game number two, he gets a very friendly bounce. Oh, and another great kickoff. We said that uh, Taco had 60% kickoff advantage in game number one. Right now, granted, we're only a, you know, a handful of seconds here into game number two. We're already at 66% kickoff advantage for game number two in favor of Blue Screen, so make sure... Uh, if you're Taco or a Taco fan, you've got to you got to watch those kickoffs blue screen, making sure that he can just score a bunch. And that is just an early challenge that Taco didn't expect blue screen to gain control. Yeah, blue screen immediately goes over. He takes it slow through mid boost and just chips it right over Danger Taco. There, I mean, Mustache, if you're gonna get that close, I feel like you have to challenge if you're Danger Taco. Oh yeah. And he just got caught off guard and blue screen again coming out with a good kickoff over here in the corner. Taco gonna have to re recover quickly. The, the de or I'm sorry, Doomsy rather trying to come out and he wasn't able to really put this one on target, but a good challenge to come out from blue screen, stuck in the corner, can't gain oh. control. All of that time, the few seconds allows Danger Taco to come in, make the play off the backboard. Blue screen can't do nothing with it because he's low boost and Taco regains control, but pressure still there from blue screen and he's taking the boost yet away from taco those that starvation might be a key to victory here the blue screen's going to try and tie up the series we just dropped this one down and taco can't quite take advantage here as 
He'll possess this one all the way to his own back wall. Big pop off. He'll elect not to go for it and instead let the boost uh, boost wars begin. Good correction here on an awkward bounce. Danger Taco faking the flip reset. Goes low and adds a beautiful fake and that will afford him goal number two. That is great control to come out from Taco. I love the mechanics here. He's able to drop that one down. Blue screen has to make the play thinking that is going to be a flip reset or somewhere in the middle of the goal. The fact that Taco left that onto the ground works out perfectly. The fake kickoff coming out yet again from Taco. He used it last time to gain control. He's going to use it again this time. He's got the angle, puts it in the back of the net, and we're all tied up. That is one way to uh, deal with someone who definitely ha has your number on kickoff, I'll say, because Blue Screen is getting the best of Danger Taco when they meet at midfield. But when you're doing something like this, it affords you early possession. It affords you a good challenge. And so far, two for two on capitalizing. Oh, but there's one kickoff that Blue Screen's not going to allow get by that uh, kickoff advantage that we've been referring to here in game number two. Again, back in favor for Blue Screen as he puts this easy one in. Yeah, fantastic delay kickoff there. He intentionally goes super slow there, so he is second to that ball, and he's just able to control where the 50 goes, and it's straight into the back of the net. So that's a great kickoff strategy. He went with the speed flip one there, and Danger Taco got the best of him, but he can't quite put it away. Was thinking about looking for a demo instead. It's a doomsday attempt. Taco can't quite get it in, and blue screen, great control, and save the flicks towards Danger Taco's net, and he'll put it away. It's five to three. Wow, I really thought Taco had the number there on blue screen. Blue screen able to get like a little almost tornado spin, able to hold off in the net, didn't even allow it to cross the line, and then just able to get one more touch on that ball to get the speed needed before Taco, you know, try to take blue screen off the pitch and another kickoff in favor, but Taco able to get the bump is going to give him time to regain himself over here in his own corner and blue screen's just gonna have to shadow. Taco tries to get this one by, but it stalls in the midfield. A couple of Taco's touches have been just a little bit too heavy, and it's really allowed Blue Screen to get the 50 that he's looking for, not just a 50, the 50 that he really wants to take. It's, it's affording him a lot of friendly bounces, and speaking of bounces, I mean, this one pops right off the wall back in front of Taco, and he just chips it over Blue Screen. Yeah, and I don't think Blue Screen thought he was going to be able to get that kind of power. I mean, he was almost stopped. And even though it's a 32 mile per hour goal, that had a lot more oomph behind it than I think Blue Screen was anticipating. And so a good play to come out from Taco. He puts himself back within one. This one stalls over to the side. Taco pops it over to midfield where Blue Screen, Blue Screen was ready and waiting and goes off of the crossbar and not able to get the dunk or pop in. And that gives Taco the ability to get around some good car control. We're all tied up yet again. Yeah, he just caught Blue Screen uh, uh, flat tired, we'll say, right there. You can see Blue Screen break his momentum, and he comes to a complete stop, albeit short. And it was just enough for what Danger Taco needed. Yeah, just that, that perfect control to be able to cut in like that causes Blue Screen to basically stall all of his momentum and like you said able to really get control and taco coming in with that early challenge now we see blue screen trying to launch it down taco is trying to get that, that clear out to the corner and still oh blue screen caught flat-footed yet again he doesn't have the boost taco putting that on the far side and taco's gonna take the lead at the two minute mark yeah, it's just a little awkward break of his momentum there. He doesn't quite land how he wants to. You can see in the flip that he just turned a little bit back into the right rather than keeping his momentum going back towards his own net. And again, I mean, we're, we're at the level mustache to where when you break your momentum and your opponent's speed flipping, uh, it creates a very large gap between you and them. Right, and he was low boost anyway, so the fact that he, you know, wasn't able to get the power slide, and this one's just going to be another easy one for Taco to put in. So now a three, oh, I'm sorry, two goal lead rather, in favor of Taco. This one, Blue Screen's going to have to go back to those kickoffs as we, if he's going to try and get a uh, quick goal to see what he can do and, and, you know, decrease this lead. Otherwise, Taco's really starting to feel good. He's got a minute 48 left on the clock. Still a lot of time here in this particular game, but Blue Screen's gonna need something quick, something to answer back with what Danger Taco's putting out here on the pitch. 
Danger Taco going to pop this one up. He faked the flip reset the first time. He's going for the flip reset this time. Didn't quite get it, and that's a great save from Blue Screen, who's going to try to connect on the other end, and he will. And that is a great job. Great defense to offense there from Blue Screen. That's a great answer back. That's what we were talking about. Blue screen, just good wherewithal, knowing how Danger Taco is going to try to play that game or play that ball. And just blue screen able to get one goal that he needs. He's going to have to try and get another one and almost able to do so. He had 24 after the ball bounced and Taco able to throw himself in front. But the doomsday potential is there, not going to be there now. So he's just gonna have to slow play. Gets it in front of the goal. Can he put this in? And a great power slide to cut that one in. We're all tied up. Good patience by Blue Screen there. Waits for the 50. Again, the 50 he's looking for. He knows he's got Taco a little bit awkward facing his own net. And does a great job preserving his boost. Puts it right into the back of the net. And we are all tied at seven mustache. Fresh game with 118 left. The race to the midfield boost goes. Danger Taco elects not to go for it. He says, I'm gonna just see if I can't put this on target and see if I can't get it over. Not able to, Doomsy, not gonna be there. And Taco's gonna just go for the corner, see if he can't reset himself yet again. Good challenge come out from Blue Screen around the corner, not gonna be fast enough. The power slide coming out. Now Blue Screen's gonna have to go a little bit wide, see what he can do on this challenge, but Paco just trying to keep him away. And now nothing left in the tank for Blue Screen. With nothing in the tank, it's going to give Danger Taco a lot of space. Good control, checking where his opponent is. Took the 50. It's a unfriendly bounce for Danger Taco. And then a great double jump touch there from Blue Screen. He'll find yet another touch. And man, that has to be frustrating for Danger Taco here. But Blue Screen didn't find any pads. He'll use 12 to clear it. And the defense holds strong mustaches. We're under 30 left. Right. And this is the make or break for Blue Screen. Remember, he's got to be able to get this goal, or he's got to be able to take this win, rather, if he wants this to go to a game number three. That uh -oh. is not what you want to see, and Blue Screen able to recover, but he used a good amount of boost to do it. So now seven seconds, Danger Taco's got control, but Blue Screen able to at least get the save. He's not going to be able to do much with it with 13 in the tank. He's just got to let it drop and go to overtime. That was some sketchy defense there, Mustache, but you can't question the results. No goal for Danger Taco. Blue Screen makes it play. And we're into overtime here of game number two. And while wow. we were in overtime, and now we're straight out of it. Danger Taco with the challenge. It's straight into the back of the net, and he takes the series two to nothing. Right. I thought, uh, I really thought Blue Screen was actually going to go for a power hit there. Instead, he elects to go for the dribble, and Taco reads it perfectly. And because of it, able to come out with the win in game two and this series win. So a big GG to Danger Taco to take down Blue Screen. Blue Screen tried, he tried to keep it close and both games were just a one goal deficit. And that's all it needed for Taco to win it. So back and forth as well. Blue Screen with the major kickoff advantage in game number two, but again, the Danger Taco able to overcome that deficit, mixed in some fake challenges, mixed in some fake kickoffs and He's able to pull it out in overtime. Yeah, that's, that was a thrilling matchup, to say the least. Taco's hopping in here in chat. I know you guys are all seeing him there. He says his, his floor is a puddle. Yeah, that was a, a sweat fest, to say the least. I mean, both players playing their hearts out to see what they could do out there on the pitch. And uh, Taco just coming out on top and proving me wrong. I should have gone with the pine cone. So I'm glad I didn't make the, the bet that I was thinking about saying. But uh, nevertheless, <laughs> apparently pine cones are the answers, ladies and gentlemen. Kids, go out there, go find a pine tree and, and see what you can pull off to see if you can propel yourself throughout your Rocket League uh, career. But uh, I was proven wrong. So now we got to allow you and now Top Gun to say why it was the right prediction to go with the top, the top Gun. I mean, I'm just gonna say that I've gotten both the predictions. I, it's, you know, it's honestly been a few events since I've, like, you know, I think in previous events, um, at least more recent ones, I have not been doing too hot on the prediction side of things, but this event's looking pretty good for me. And I know that I'm ahead and I'm just, I'm just increasing the lead. You know, just continuously bring, bring in the wins, bring in the wins. Um, I did vote for Danger Taco. We did believe in the pine cone 
and lots of you in chat also believed in the pinecone strat here um today and you guys have the opportunity to win a 50 dollar amazon card for believing in the pinecone so Here is Synamic D's prize winner. He's another caster. In fact, he casts with Danger Taco on the AAA series uh, that was actually going on earlier today. Then I guess it was just meant to be, huh? We have a lot of situations here like that at the URLC where, where we got a lot of uh, interesting winners here. Exclamation point claim uh, for your prize, by the way. Um, congratulations on the $50 Amazon gift card. And, you know, I'm sure the Danger Taco... Just very grateful for you believing in the pinecone strap. Maybe in order to get SSL and hoops, I need to eat myself a pinecone. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll consider it. Maybe I'll consider it. Oh man, the things you learn here at the URLC are just, just absolutely mind blowing. But again, that was a fantastic series. And I believe we've got another break coming up before we head to our SSL matchup. So with more from our band for tonight, Anchor, we've got yet another cover. Here's Bad Guy.
the URLC roster. Please help me. Please help me! <laughs> I have no... <laughs> oh. And now, Dynamic D's Game Changer with Remy RL. All right, guys, look, so my man, Danger Taco, had to get the dub in two here because he was about to have a stomach ache from eating all those pine cones. Um, he had blue screen completely flat-footed here, got himself the tie-up goal. Uh, very next play, this can't happen from blue screen. Uh, he messed up his flip. Taco's a good player. I play against him all the time. He's consistent. He's going to score that all day. Um, we all saw at the end here how blue screen was just completely thrown off guard by Taco. He was terrified. He missed completely off the wall. I think it was right here. Uh, that can't happen. And then Taco with the ego challenge because he was up one series. That's it. And that was Dynamic D's Game Changer. Welcome back, everyone. Um, you know, it was a fantastic series once again. Um, I guess Blue Screen did not eat tacos for dinner. Um, <laughs> unfortunate, honestly, for him. But Taco coming out with a dub there. Um, you know, I I understand from Mustache it was a little bit unexpected. Um, and we did go for Taco, but I think it might have been a little bit un unexpected in general, considering how much uh, Blue Screen does play ones. But he did manage to take the series. Um, and they were very, very close games. So congratulations to Danger Taco. Yeah, that was a fantastic series there. It was a pleasure to uh, cast that with mustache. And then, you know, Top Gun, we have to congratulate you on winning the URLC fan choice for the TikTok there. I got a big kick out of that. That was on my For You page uh, back when you originally posted it. But yeah, again, if you want to see uh, more of Top Gun's TikToks, join the URLC community Discord. You get to vote on which one gets played during our URLC live events. And again, Top Gun, a big part of uh, big part of the URLC. So of course, uh, when her TikTok came up, I, I at least figured that she would be the one to uh, win. And it was funny too. So again, congratulations on that. Thank you. I, I honestly, until um, I saw the run of show, I did not even know my TikTok was there for voting. So I'm just saying, I didn't vote for myself. Just want you guys to know. I did not, I had nothing to do with the voting at all. Um, when I saw the run of show and I was like, you know, I was, I was going over what, what's, what's up with this event and stuff. And I saw my name and I messaged Stone. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, what? That's crazy though, um, but thank you, I appreciate it. All right, deep breath, everyone. This is the moment that we've all been waiting for, and this is a big matchup match here. Drewski versus Basilisk is right around the corner. Mustache, I know you flip-flopped based on some of these uh, promo packages, which we'll look at in just a second. Do you see yourself being swayed tonight, or are you going to stick with uh, your pick that you'll reveal to us after the video? I'm, I'm sticking with it just because of once, if you guys are new, if you guys are just tuning in, first off, welcome. But if you're just tuning in, you're going to see in this promo package why I'm picking this particular player. It's because it's something that we've been dealing with uh, each and every event. So I'm just gonna let the, the promo package speak and then I will go and, you know, we'll go into the predictions after that. But uh, yeah, you guys, you guys aren't gonna wanna miss this. Here I'm interested to see how big the mechanics come into play. And as I say that, Drewski up flip reset under, and it's two to one. Fake kickoff coming out from Drewski. He didn't even bother going for it. Drewski has it. The challenge is gonna be there, and it is gonna fall into the back of the net. Man, my favorite mode from this had to just be Drewski's domination. It was one of the most dominating performances I've seen in ones at that level in a very long time. Uh, I believe it was Asfira who just elected to to retreat from the ball, and there is Ooh. a great touch. 
Drewski putting it in the back. Asfra tried to mimic uh, Drewski's play style too much. This is not a if you can't beat him, join him scenario. This is if you can't beat him, do the opposite and stop him. He must have, have a protractor in the front of that car or something. The demo, he's only two goals down. Another accurate flick. Unbelievable from Drewski. I don't think there's a single player in the URLC roster that I don't have a chance of beating. Bass's play style at a honed SSL level is a scary thing. Dude, you're, you're a smart player. A lot of players would just try to shoot this at the net. I've really enjoyed my coaching with Remy. He's got a very analytical approach, which I really appreciate. Like, we've gone over some of Juicy's games, kind of looked at some of his tendencies and, and patterns and stuff like that. And then the initial few seconds after he gets it on the front, he's not going to flip right away. Yeah. You have about, like, two car lengths before he's, like, fully settled. If someone's trying to settle it, he might have been better off just straight up full sending this. The main goal today is to work on knowing when to challenge. Nice. I love it. You can do whatever you want. Awesome. Get that out of here. Awesome. <laughs> That's his play style. Slow, methodical. Uh, I think he should stick to his roots. It has a good play style. He reminds me of, hey, yo, I'm hungry, but at the SSL level. Solid, it's consistent, and I think he could catch a dub with it. Going into this event, there's going to be a game plan for sure for me. Basilisk is a really good defender, can counterattack quickly. It definitely seems like Juicy is a mechanical player. Definitely someone who's not afraid to go for stuff, you know, in the air or go for the fancy flicks, but he can definitely execute all of it, so it's not just for show. I gotta be careful in the air for what I go for. I think focusing on ground play, dribbles, flicks. Just trying to be as consistent as I can with that. Juicy, I know we've played each other in ranked, so I know that you know me a little bit. I know you're a mechanical guy, but don't underestimate me. I'm going to be relying on some IQ plays to hopefully try and balance out the lack of mechanics. Because I know that you're better mechanically, but I don't know. Don't count me out. I think we might have a good matchup. But one thing I want Basilisk to know is I'm always looking for those montage plays. If he gives me too much space, you better watch out. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. We all know Remy um, has been doing this for just about every event where he kind of does a little training with uh, with one of the players for uh, for one of the series, right? And he has not caught a win so far, Mustache. He's not caught a win so far. He's, he's not. He's not caught a win so far. And so... Yeah, uh, you know, believe me, but it's not for lack of trying. It's not because the players weren't good or his coaching isn't good. It's just, you know, what happens on the pitch happens on the pitch. So he's not been able to pull out the coach win, if you will. But I think this could be an interesting matchup. Obviously, we see Basilisk talking about how he's not as mechanically inclined as Drewski is, but that can sometimes be a factor against you in ones and you, you're all wondering mustache what are you talking about Do, sometimes you see these players they get a little flashy they get a little too flashy and they start making mistakes they start not hitting what they expect to hit because now they've got the pressure on them so just because he's more mechanically inclined doesn't guarantee him a win but i'm gonna wait till the viewer predictions so top gun uh, yeah he hasn't gotten the win uh, Remy hasn't gotten the win, but this could be a different uh, scenario here. Yeah, of course. Uh, I totally agree. I think that um, I think it could go either way, personally. I think IQ plays versus mechanical can be a very interesting, interesting game here. Um, but we do have to get viewer predictions going. Remember that if you uh, predict correctly, then you have a chance to win a, 30, or a $50 Amazon gift card, sorry. Um, so make sure that you guys get your votes in chat. This is Sign Out of Day's Viewer Predictions. Who will win the series? I think, uh, I'll start off this time. I know we had Volt start off one and Mustache uh, start off one as well. So I'll go ahead and start off the, the SSL division. By the way, you guys, this is a best of five and it is the only best of five of the event uh, while the champ and GC divisions are a best of three. So in this best of five, we got Basilisk and 
a Drewski, Drewski being more mechanical, Basilis being a little bit, um, from what it seems, being to work on counterattacks. Um, you know, honestly, I think that I already have my pick, I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident in it, um, simply because I know that Remy, sorry, Remy, I'm sorry, but the training hasn't, hasn't quite worked yet. It hasn't quite worked yet. And I think, I think I just got to go with the instinct here and, uh, go with, uh, Drewski. Well, Volts, I want you to go and then I'll go last. I'm going to, I'm again fantastic promo package the production tonight has been perfect but i have to correct bass on one thing drewski is not a mechanical player he is a mechanical nightmare and it is a major major problem for his opponents we saw him take on his fura who is a very good player he worked as fura the mechanic the mechanics got to the point of where i mean there there was nothing he could do and so i i don't see it going any different you can game plan it all you want you can study all the film you want you can get great coaching from remy all you want i mean it, it doesn't change where drewski's mechanics are at and how capable of a player he is i'm going with drewski oh man all right i'm doing it remy basilisk you're getting this win. I'm going with you guys. You're, you, you, you have to be able to pull this one out. I feel like the training will help them, even though, yes, I know how mechanical Drewski is, but sometimes I, we've seen it enough here in URLC. The mechanics aren't always the key factor. Uh, you know, just flicks what we saw Danikin. She was saying that she wanted to get more mechanical. She's, she did flicks. Yeah, that is a mechanic, but it wasn't like what you would expect as far as everybody's saying, oh, I can do this mechanic. I can come off the ceiling. I can come off the wall, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's going to be just enough. So I, I'm going to go with Remy. Uh, he's due for a win. I'm going to go with Bas Basilisk. It's, it's going to be you guys. Uh, I guess I'm going to be the lone gunman here. I mean, you know, uh, I do believe that if uh, Drewski wins, that's what three for me and two for. That would be Volts? two, be two for, for me Volts and one for me. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I get it, I get it, but I, I gotta go with my buddy Remy and 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 Basilis. They're working hard. I feel like the, uh, of any player that Remy has coached, I think this one can give him his first win. I, I definitely think Remy has a really good chance at this one. Basilisk is a fantastic player, and he, again, he's a great ones player here. So, I mean, this was, this one was a, in a different situation for Remy here to where, I mean, again, you're working with someone who has really mastered the game of car soccer at this point, and it's the finer, finer details that you have to iron out. But in a best of five here, I mean, Drewski has that adaptability. He's played in these RLCS quals. He, he's a high-ranking six-man's player as well for threes. He grinds and spends his time in ones. We've seen what he's capable of in the air. I just, I think it's too much over the course of a five-game series for Basilis, Basilis to overcome. All right, so lone man, lone man here. Uh, I do want to point out, remember when we had the, the last one driving, Basilisk, uh, he, he did quite a showing, not to mention he did get about eight lives given to him or so, but still, he he definitely has the the mentality to show up there on the pitch and do what he needs to do. 42% going with Drewski, 58% going with Basilisk. I don't know if the Drewski fans just aren't in chat, but I'm a little surprised seeing the promo, seeing you guys, and knowing what I know about Drewski, the fact that he was not the favor in chat so basilisk the, the the coaching from remy the the skill that basilisk already has will it be enough folks i you know who's to say we've been we've had crazy matchups throughout the night this is our last one the the main event the best of five can basilisk take it in a best of five again it's that five number i mean you have to win three games and I don't know if that's a mountain that Basilisk can climb because, again, I can definitely see him. It, it won't be a full sweep like we saw against his VR here. I, I think he gets a game, maybe even two, off of Drewski here. But in a full five-game set, I mean, there's so many different factors. And 
Again, the creativity and, and the elusiveness of Drewski when he's on ball, off ball, taking 50s, looking for those flip resets. I think it's just going to be a little bit too much uh, for him to overcome in the long run, but it definitely has to start in game one. He can't afford to get behind in the series early. Right. You know, you're talking about your prediction and, and not being um, a sweep or so. I agree. I don't see it being a sweep, but Basilisk, if he is to win, if he is to win this, he's got to do it in four. He cannot allow this to go to the, the that fifth game. If it goes to the fifth game, I think the longevity of the series will just wear down on Basilisk, and I do feel like Drewski will take it. So if it goes to five, I'm I'm gonna be a little concerned. But not saying that Basilisk can't win it, but uh, he's got to win it in four or less. So he's either got to sweep him, which is going to be a tall order, or he's got to, you know, he, he's going to have to have one get away from him and, and see what he can do. Hopefully, maybe it's just uh, the first one can come back in game two. Remember, you know, best of fives, I always say game two is the most important one. So even if he loses game one, Basilisk comes in, he changes, you know, he adapts, he overcomes, he takes down in game two and, you know, maybe uses that momentum. Who knows? It's going to be a tall order. Ones is a long game mode, especially when these players have to watch all of our replays because we're obviously going to break them down. And then you have five game potential. This could be a long uh, series ahead of us, Volts, but uh, I'm glad it's going to be these two players. These always are fun to watch. Tough to prepare for and hard to stay locked in for a whole five game set of ones. So both of these players going to want to get out of here quickly. Basilisk in the orange, Drewski in the blue. We are underway for the main event from Beckwith Park. And oh my, both players in the Dominus here. That's something that I didn't even notice. And, and I'm putting two and two together now. Both of these guys are Dominus mains. Indeed, and so that's going to be an interesting plan. Oh my goodness, I didn't think Drewski was actually going to be able to get a touch on that one. But the demo coming out, Basilisk going to get the first one on the board. First one on the board, he went for it. He's the first one to uh, delve in his bag of mechanics, too. The flippery set was a pretty one. I was with you. I thought Drewski was way too high to even reach that. But longer hitbox on that, Dominus will afford him a, a touch, but raced from the pitch. So 23 seconds in, it's a one to nothing Basilisk. And oh no, Drewski has it on his hood, went for the 45 flick. It won't quite work out, but he's got all the boost in the world. Now Basilisk just has to see and wait, and he didn't have much to play with that one. So Drewski, knowing that, elected not to challenge and waited to see what Basilisk would do. And lights a little pop up. Basilisk, he's got about nothing left in the tank now, and used all of it to just try to make the play. Drews, or I'm sorry, Drewski actually gonna go make a play and get wow. the angle. I thought when that was gonna hit the wall that he really was just gonna have to bring it back out. What a play from Drewski. Oh, the adjustment there. After taking the challenge, he stays calm and collected, uses that air roll so well to position his car. And we're, we're at the upper echelon mustache, well within the uh, top 1% of all players of this game. So uh, no, I shouldn't really be surprised by things like that anymore, but I don't, I still am every day. Oh, indeed. And, you know, it doesn't matter who the player is. It's just whenever you see these high level mechanics and skill come out here in Rocket League, it's always just a pleasure to watch and be a part of it. And Drewski is going to see what he can do. And that's with a great play. He's got control. Drewski almost trying to go for the demo. Lex not to waste any more boost on the attempt. And Drewski doesn't quite get the touch, but he is going to be able to make the double play. I'm sorry, double tap rather, and get the clear and the possession. He's got control. He's just trying to keep the ball away from Bassey. And this one could bounce up, puts it on the far side, and Drewski not going to be able to make the play. Great choice by Baskel is there. He knows that Drewski doesn't have too much boost in the tank, and he's not supersonic, which means he can't quite reach that one. And Drewski won't be able to turn it aside, so a big goal number two there. And this is a pretty good start here. He's limiting Drewski's ability to take to the air, and so far has really kind of quelled the mechanics that we know and have seen here at the URLC that Drewski likes to go for. Oh, and there's a fantastic challenge. We all know, I've said it so many times, you've got to watch the corners. And 
Uh, Drewski coming in for that heavy challenge right there in the corner. You know, unless you just get the perfect hit on it, it's always, always going to be in favor of the, you know, player with the, the control of the ball. And the speed was just not in Drewski's favor. And because of it, that's able to put it in the back of the net. He got bumped off kickoff here and landed perfectly to put this one away. That's a fortunate break as Drewski just launches him right into that pad. He uses what he's given and it's straight into the back of the net. A three goal lead mustache. This is exactly what you want if you're a Basilisk fan. You want to make sure that he's able to hold on these heavy leads that he has and make Drewski really have to, you know, force himself at challenges and force himself at possessions because he's going to try to race to see if he can't claw himself back. He's got 245 left in regulation, so plenty of time, but Basilisk is doing well with controlling the pace of this particular game and controlling the boost right at, uh, also. A great challenge coming off the backboard. Bass just going to have to hold it here in the corner and see what he can do on the transition. Drewski's going to head all the way back and grab corner. Bold turn there. Yeah, it was a very strange turn as well and just never quite made its way in front for Basilisk to take advantage of. But Drewski trying to escape and now we'll get all the way down. He's grabbed corner, just trying to work it around. Awkward little wave dash. We'll just hand possession away, but he stays with zero just to kind of mess with Basilisk, Basilisk there. We heard him talk about it in the promo pack, Mustache. He wants to avoid the big counterattack goals. You got to watch here because there is potential goal to come out there from Basilisk and I'm noticing a lot of awkward challenges but as I say that Drewski with all the control able to you know close in on that lead and you can see from Drew Drewski's takeoff as, as soon as he took off for this one you knew he was locked in on it like a homing missile and he was confident in where that was headed he put it right off the backboard where it needed to be and well he's going to make that 10 out of 10 times and I feel like if you're a, uh, a Basilisk fan and you see Drewski in the air like that, you almost have to watch out. And he tries to go for the bump and the, and the demo. It doesn't quite work out. And Drewski's just going to launch this one. Basilisk is there off the backboard. It goes. Drewski's got control. Doesn't quite waterfall. Not able to get the flip reset. So those should be able to give time for Basilisk. Shot on. Crossbar wow. down and in. I didn't think that was going to go in. What a bounce here. I mean, this has to be the perfect placement. If he puts it even a little bit higher, it should have kicked straight back out. But what a bounce here from Drewski as, as the post and, and crossbar afford him some luck as it takes a very friendly bounce. Fake kickoff out here. And, well, Mustache, it looks like Drewski's starting to get going. I didn't, uh, I definitely didn't expect that. Uh... Uh, that post rather to be so favorable to just allow that to roll in but Ruth Drewski's definitely looking like he is uh, starting to to warm up I guess if you will maybe he's just having a little bit of a slow start he's still down the one goal just now past the 60 second mark and that one oh shot on and a quick turnaround I mean basically 180 Drewski had to turn his car to try to get that save and he did in a fantastic fashion, but the pressure still to come out from Basilisk. Drewski with nothing left in the tank. There's not much he can do because of it. You could see him try to hop onto this corner boost and give it a second. And then, of course, right as he exits, it spawns before Basilisk there. So an unfortunate break for Drewski. And well, two gold deficit to overcome here. 44 seconds left and definitely uh, not out of reach just yet, Mustache, but, but not where you want to be. You notice Drewski is trying to go for those bumps. He's trying to get a little bit more aggressive. And, and that's where you want to be if you're Basilisk. You want to be in his head. He's uh, feeling like he's got to challenge everything and see if he can't take Bass off the uh, pitch. He gets a little bit of a bump there. He's able to get the goal. He's back within one, 23 seconds, so still doable. But I'm noticing Drewski chase the demo a little bit more than you think. Yeah, it could be the time on the clock making him feel a little bit desperate there, but he was setting up a ground to air dribble, just knocked off the ball there. He does such a good job of getting the ball up in the air. That was something Mittens highlighted in our original series that Cobain was struggling with, was getting that ball up high enough for the ground to air dribbles. But Drewski gets it all the way up there. Flip reset turned aside, and Basilisk said he could save the mechanics. He's trying to leak out and punish, and that's what you have to be careful of for when you go for these big mechanical attempts.
I love the recovery from Basilisk. And not only that, he's able to try to go for Drewski because he's figuring either A, I'm going to get a bump on him, or B, I'm going to be able to get the demo. Obviously, Drewski had the speed, but still, Basilisk was able to get to, you know, get to Drewski and then to the ball so that he can put that shot on. He's got the two goal lead. This one should be a win for Basilisk. And that's game number one of a best of five where Basilisk able to take down the juggernaut that is Drewski and his mechanics. Will it be enough to propel him into game number two? This was a tall order just to win this one. Yeah, uh, I said it had to be done in game number one. Vasilis had to take game one here to get off on the right foot here. And uh, I think he sent a message to Drewski that he's here to play. He's got a good game plan. He can save the mechanics. He's fast. He's reliable at what is the core of ones. And I mean, it showed uh, it showed on the pitch there. Limited Drewski's mechanical attempts as well, despite a 64% kickoff advantage for Drewski. Right. I mean, if you're looking at the stats right there, I, I feel like a lot of it favor Drewski besides the demo mm -hmm. for Basilisk and and maybe that was it you you just start having to get in the head of Drewski you have to say hey you know like you said uh, I'm fast I've got the recovery I'm able to get the demos on you when I need to take you off the pitch and you started to notice Drewski chasing those demos I don't think you know he didn't even quite really get a touch on uh, Basilisk when he aimed for it now obviously he got touches he got bumps but and he was chasing the demo. He didn't quite get in. It kind of puts him out of position. So keep it up, Basilisk. You're in his head. But Drewski, obviously, being the player that he is, you're not going to be there rent free. So game number two, we'll see if Drewski can, can get it together. And Mustache, again, you question, are the demos strategic? Is it a little bit of desperation? Does the time on the clock affect the way that he's chasing demos? All questions, you know, we'll probably never know the answer to, but uh, I mean, knowing Drewski, that's not really his play style. So I'm sure he'd love to work his way back into the air, back out of those awkward situations and really get rolling here in game two. That was three large boost pads that Bass just took from Drewski. He is able to pick up his own corner and that challenge might be a goal. It is going to be so. And that is just an awkward, unfortunate situation if you're a Basilisk fan. Basilisk lost Drewski right behind the ball for a split second and he went from being on his near post to right on top of him. Again, it's so difficult when you have that ball on your foot to be able to see your opponent mustache. And I mean, you lose somebody like Drewski and someone at this SSL level of ones for even a split second. They can they, they cover a lot of ground in a short period of time. Just like that. Look at Drewski with those challenges. You see, he kind of faked the challenge. He turns quick enough and Basilisk just knows he can't do anything with it. And Drewski, that, that turn, just perfect play from him. He's got the two goal lead exactly where you want to be if you're Drewski. Players are joking about it, but Basilisk was right on Drewski's tail there looking for the demo. He just didn't quite find it. No recovery off kickoff will allow Drewski to grab both corner and mid. Oh, and Basilisk left him a lot of room. Drewski's not going to take it to the air, though. I thought we would see a mechanical attempt. Instead, it's a modified hook shot that will be turned aside. And Basilisk now on the offensive end. Drewski trying to not give him too much space without getting burnt. And his defense stands tall. No flip into this one as he's trying to possess it. But Basilisk all over him right now. Will that flick be all over him? No, Drewski able to get the touch and able to get the recovery off that backboard. Fantastic defensive play to come out from the blue side with Drewski. Basilisk got control from the midfield, tried to bait him out with a potential shot and fakes the hit on it. And so does Drewski. So they're both just trying to see who can bait out the other. This one might be a breakaway. No, Basilisk not able to launch it down. I thought if he would have been able to get a power hit on that, he would have been able to kind of beat Drewski on his recovery and launch it down the pitch. Put that first one in the board for himself. He's got the musty. Does he go for oh. the flip reset? No, it water falls down. So Basilisk is going to have to make a play on the ball. And because of it allows Drewski to take the corner boost. Another attempt in the air, the flip reset there. Basilisk not going to attempt. And Drewski again, going to take the corner boost from Bass. 
Yeah, Drewski's mechanics are starting to come to life, and that's what you have to be careful of because, again, we've seen even if they're not scoring or putting the ball in the back of the net, they're keeping you pinned as Basilis is forced to make the save off his own crossbar. Oh, that was a, a only place left to put it kind of deal, and he does make it work, but now Drewski time, space, air dribble incoming. He stays on this one and dunks it home. Drewski with a big 3-0 lead. You see him get that pop up and you're just like, oh my gosh. So you see how Drewski, you know, sets himself up behind the ball. No matter how Basilisk challenged that one, that was going in because he's got all the momentum and gravity working in his favor to just draw him down. And now he's got this big, heavy car behind the ball, making sure that if it, you know, has a challenge, it's still just going to dunk itself into the net. Perfect play by Drewski to put himself up 3-0. Ooh, hook shot is off and it caroms hard back out towards midfield and that means Drewski even on low boost there with 33 is just able to put it away and well mustache this is what you had to be careful of if you're Basilisk this one threatening to get out of hand with still two minutes left yeah that uh, the, that goose egg sitting over there on the orange side is not helping Basilisk and again he's starting to kind of chase certain attempts that maybe you wouldn't quite go for if you weren't in this part uh, particular predicament. So because of that, he's got two minutes, so it's still doable, but he's gonna have to get one on the board to just give himself some momentum and kind of change that mentality that he's currently in. And we all talk about how game twos are important in a best of five. So right now, if you are a Drewski fan, that's exactly where you want to see Drewski be. He's currently in the lead, and this might be the way to open those floodgates like you like to say, Volts, and see if Basilis can turn this game around with a minute 41 left in regulation. Yeah, there's a chance, but he's going to need more shots like that. Drewski almost climbed the ladder there just a little bit late, and yeah, Mustache, I feel like, especially as you get deeper into the game, sometimes just getting that goose egg out of your scoreboard is so huge, and well, Basilisk is immediately making my point uh, correct here as he delays this kickoff stop and pop, and that's a wide open net for him. He went from 4-0 to 4-2, just like that. Yeah, but that kickoff is not going to work a second time. Drewski will not be baited by that. So let's see what Bass can do yet again. But hey, there's another great kickoff if he gets the touch. And I said a big if as Drewski able to get into the air, get the play, he's going to have to Go for the corner and what Ooh. a flick to come out from Drewski. Obviously no power. He was pretty much in front of the, is that, oh no, it is not an own goal, but boy, the camera angle kind of tricked my eyes. And I'm sure most of you in uh, the Twitch chat thought the same thing. Drewski didn't like the way Basilisk was kind of uh, positioned. So he says, you know what? How about I go all the way back and try this one yet again? to no avail as Basilisk does find the possession he's looking for. This one slow in the corner. Basilisk quick to pop it over, but he can't quite recover and still just be forced to kind of tap it back and forth between himself and Drewski here as he continue to just move this one around the pitch. He can't quite find a look that he likes and he's running out of time to make some of these opportunities count as Drewski again directing traffic to his own corner from his backboard here. This one on his hood, 40 to work with, took a great low 50, and as the 30 seconds remaining shows up on your screen, Drewski would love to just kill some time in this orange corner here and just continue to really frustrate Basilisk here. That's a mistake, though. Opportunities there until Drewski, good catch and flick back out to the mid. He's demoed, but the shot still comes through, and, well, Mustache, that might just be the dagger here in game two. Yeah, I think that might be it. I mean, you saw so many attempts to come out from Basilisk, and he wasn't able to do much with it. And, and unfortunately for him, it just wasted a lot of time. And I think Drewski knew that. So he's going to say, hey, I'm just going to try to challenge him and make sure that, you know, if he's going to make the shot attempt, he's going to have to be accurate or, you know, try to overpower me. And because he wasn't able to, all that time was wasted. Now Drewski was able to get that goal, and that was the definitive factor. So game two going to go in favor of Drewski. We're all tied up in this series. We all knew that this was not going to be a sweep for either player. But now... The game two win goes to Drewski, the most important I fear, or I feel out, out of a best of five. And so now if you're Basilisk, what do you do to turn this around?
That's a great question, and quite frankly, I don't have the answer. He probably wishes we could have a uh, little timeout break so we could talk with Coach Remy and maybe get a couple words of advice. But, again, we had the Game 3 mustache. It's the last swing game of the series. Whoever wins this is headed on to Series Point. Um, I mean, there's not, there's not too much to clean up. But Basilis worked his game plan in Game 1. Drewski got off to his game plan and never looked back in Game 2. And... I mean, quite frankly, I think it's just coming down to that first minute, minute 30 of who really gets going. Right, I'm looking over the stats, and you guys can see it there on your screen as well. You know, Basilisk still, uh, I'm sorry, Drewski rather, still coming out with the kickoff advantage. Zero demos for himself, electing not to, to go, or not to be aggressive in this particular game. He, he gets the two saves, eight shots on target, and he's getting five of those in the back of the net. So... Great plays to come out from Drewski. Baskalisk, it was really that just four goal deficit that he had to claw himself back from that really, you know, plagued him. So he's got to make sure that he can keep the game close. Not necessarily get the first goal or even the second goal, but he can't allow it to get more than two goals. Otherwise, I feel like having to claw back against a player like Drewski is just too tall of an order for Baskalisk to, to pull himself out of. 100% agree, and it definitely felt like Drewski was able to play his game more. We didn't see him awkwardly chasing demos or even really looking uh, to keep it on the ground as much as he did in game one. He took to the skies. He went for what he wanted. Basilis lost him again with the ball on his hood, and Drewski will be able to make this one play despite an awkward bounce off the post. This is almost an exact mirror to what happened there in game number two, and, and, and at this point, I feel like Basilis can't allow those situations to happen. You, you've got to watch dribbling around Drewski. He's going to challenge you. And so far, he's I'm pretty sure I'd have to, you know, go back through the uh, through games one and two to, to really, you know, make sure I'm correct. But oh, oh my gosh, what a dunk. But to, I feel like the challenges are always won by Drewski in those particular situations. What is that second touch? from Drewski right there on, on the setup for the air dribble. How does he, I, I, I don't even understand because he doesn't flip into it, but he flicks it so high up and it sells the fact that he's going for that air dribble and then he just lets it fall right back down mustache and takes a beautiful 50. Uh, another oh one, goodness, third goal in. And again, you're starting to see this, this deficit start to climb and you're allowing the mechanics to come out from Drewski. You do have to shut them down. He's able to just kind of punch these these uh, shots in the, and put them through and everything. And, and you've got to watch yourself because it's going to start snowballing to a point where you will not be able to come back from. And Drewski has got the flip reset, goes for it and almost puts that one in. It started across the line. Yeah, this is a very dangerous situation now for Basilis. We saw it against his Fura as well when Drewski gets going in these 1v1s and, and he, he starts to feel the confidence of hitting a couple different shots. I mean, he, he just starts pouring it on and that's a big miss of back corner there that will allow Basilis, Basilis the chance to possess, but a mistake on the flick will not yield a goal just yet. I mean, again, this is such an impressive display from Drewski and his mechanics. And because of it, you've got to watch those mechanics. I mean, Basilis, he's got to see what he can do. And another flick, and you saw the little pop-up from Drewski allowed him to position himself right in front of the net just in case that ball fell favorably. And Basilis isn't even going to be able to recover in time before Drewski's able to make a play. So now it's just a big game of keep away. And with a three-goal lead... Definitely, Drewski doesn't even have to go for any more goals. He's got three minutes left on the clock, a goal a minute. And hey, Basilisk, if Drewski's going to do it to you, might as well do the same thing to him. Oh. And Drewski's still able to come down for that save. Finally, Basilisk just knocks him completely off the ball, gets aggressive, and that's maybe what you got to do. That one felt a little bit personal there. Oh, that's, oh, Basilisk was struggling. Mustache to put that in the back of the net. Dude, that felt like one of those, all right, you know what, fine. I'll just remove you completely from your goal. Get out of my way. Let me score one. But again, so much time was wasted. I mean, five seconds and, and everybody's probably like, well, five seconds isn't a lot. In Rocket League, in ones, it's an hour, I feel like. I mean, it just can give you so much time you need every second in this particular game mode because 
It can change at a moment's notice. And Basilisk not going to be able to get that one. Another potential dunk. And there it is. Drewski putting another one on the board. Yeah, Drewski's just putting Basilisk in such awkward situations. And he's got one play there. With, with him being so low on near post, he has one play right there to stop the immediate shot. And it's to do what he did. Go for, go for a pop. Go for a 50 from that low position. And the task is simple for Drewski there. Just get above him. The dunk goes back in front or in the net. And, and again, it, it comes from the amount of ones that Drewski plays, but also his understanding of car soccer. And, well, there's a good response from Basilisk. I'm not gonna lie. If Drewski, so this is this is me and ones in a nutshell. If Drew, if I'm if I'm Basilisk and Drewski gets that save there, I leave the game. There's no <laughs> way. I mean, Drewski had no boost. He had nothing going for him, but he's got the mechanics and he's got the skill. And obviously, we know these these high level games here in, in ones and in just Rocket League in general. It's tough to get past defenders when they are just that good, but still it is nothing but tilting when you're just trying to get by and you still can't do so because this player is just outpacing you left and right. Basilisk there able to turn aside a Drewski offensive opportunity and now has him in a little bit of an awkward situation, but I guess you're never awkward when your aerials look like that mustache and Drewski will make it play for now. Basilisk good corner boost starve and Oh, Drewski chasing a bump there again. Something we haven't seen too much out of him, but it will allow him to clear his zone. So Drewski chasing him. He was supersonic. Figured, hey, I'm just going to see if I can't keep that momentum going. Doesn't quite get the bump, but I do feel that was a a smart chase on the demo. I, you know, I know you guys have heard me talk about him, you know, going for the bumps and... I do feel he needed to go for Basilisk, knowing that he probably not, he, oh. we saw this happen before. What? Why? Why are we doing this? And you can see it again right here. He loses him, and then all of a sudden, Drewski, I mean, that's a jump scare. Let's be honest here. I, uh, I'm guilty of it. I flinch in Rocket League. Yeah, and it's a, it's a half flip backflip challenge from Drewski there. But I mean, that's a jump scare of sorts. You see him facing one way, and the next thing you know, he's 15 you right on you. Oh, definitely, and and you're right. He lost him. The the ball is quite large, as we all know. And and depending on your camera settings, you don't always, or you're not always able to see that player at a certain particular point. And so you know, Drewski's playing it well. There's a good challenge from Basilisk. He's gonna have to turn quick, and that one started to roll a little bit awkward. And I thought he wasn't gonna be able to get in time, but. Luckily for him, he's able to get the goal. 52 seconds left, two goals down. Still possible, but Drewski, he's, he's, he's making Basilisk work for it. Man, that was a great low 50 and using the reverse cam to check if Drewski recovered. Basilisk knew he had a little bit more time than what he's been afforded for most of this game is that was a speedy shot. Drewski, great recovery off kickoff, will be able to turn it aside and it's all the way back to the orange corner, but Drewski couldn't immediately challenge, had to wait on mid, and now Basilisk trying not to lose him. You can see him staying a little bit more on the left side that time. That's a fantastic adjustment. Oh, indeed. And I was I was like, man, don't, don't do this. I, I we, We've seen it happen now. Every time Basilisk has tried to go for the dribble, Drewski's gotten him beat. So you just got to watch it in a good way, like you said, for Basilisk to adapt and figure out what he needs to do. He's going to try it again, but oh, I, I'm watching from Basilisk's point of view. I mean, instantly, Drewski is gone out of sight. And now three seconds left. This one not going to go in favor of Basilisk, so this one will go to Drewski. And now, series match point in favor of Drewski. Drewski. Basilisk is going to have to try to send us uh, to game five after... Hopefully a game four win. Otherwise, Drewski's going to take it. And there's such a well-timed challenges mustache that almost makes me wonder if Drewski is aware that he's pulling a little disappearing act or if he's played so many ones that he, he just has the timing down. He knows when his opponents just can't see them out of habit. So I, I know that this attempt, it, though I don't, as, as a person who predicted for Basilisk, I don't want to see the dribble attempt happening in a game because I'm, I'm noticing that Drewski's got you beat. But I'm guaranteeing you we're going to see it again. I'm going to do my best to try to switch to Drewski's point of view to make sure I want to see how he's playing that because you're right. He either he knows or he's done it enough to know or he's flicking his camera back to see what 
it looks like, you know, if he's behind the ball and he doesn't see the opponent, then obviously he knows the opponent can't see him. Is he doing it in a split second? Is he just using the force? Who knows? But something <laughs> is working for him and he's able to make these challenges. Drewski, you're just a nut out there. And uh, uh, maybe I'm sorry for picking against you, but Basilisk, come on, you got this, bud. You can send us to game five. Drewski, match point, Basilisk down to his last life. Beck with Park one more time for game number four. And Basilisk needs a hot start here. If, if we let Drewski get rolling again, I think we all are aware of what the outcome could be. Early challenge, but the flick was not on. And, well, Drewski, a little bit awkward. He's gotten a couple big boosts taken from him. He's looking for a musty. That does not connect, but he pops it around here. Drewski just has to punch it in, and he'll muscle it home. He doesn't, he doesn't get the musty. He doesn't, he, he gets so awkward, but then recovers. Are you kidding me, Drewski? Where are you coming from? I guess, I guess you just make it work. Uh, call it <laughs> improvising. I don't know. Maybe halfway through he realized, or, or I don't know at this point. But Drewski is a wizard of some sorts, and the magician is now in the sky. Double flip reset. Musty went bottom left. Good save from Basilisk there. And wow, a double flip reset. Musty, I didn't quite think we'd see something like that. And he was still able to, to get the recovery needed to, to make the play. Drewski's a little awkward. He puts it, Basilisk rather, puts it right on to Drewski and gets the demo. Ooh. Hey, the demo works. I don't care who you are. Drewski is far post. He's got to put this in quick. And wow, on my screen, Drewski was there. That is a server. Uh, I forget. I'm spacing on the terminology, but the server on his side oh, in that particular point. Drewski so close to getting back to that one. And... Well, Basilisk will tie it up here. In the server, a little bit of an assist there, but again, welcome to Rocket League as <laughs> we go trying to get back around. This is Drewski actually caught Basilisk flat tired there, not moving too much. And now back out the mid we go. Basilisk is tracking him down. He doesn't want to give him any kind of mechanical opportunity, but it, and Drewski even launched after this one, able to take the 50 and grab the corner. And, and it, it's very difficult mustache to understand when it feels like an SSL is faster than another SSL, but I mean, Drewski is starting, starting to run circles around Basilisk, though it hasn't yielded results in this game, it's starting to feel that way. Oh, indeed, and there's the double! There it is, Drewski coming out! I mean, once he was in the air and had that control, this jump, and I'm like, that's it, that's a double Basilisk, almost getting to it, but just too far underneath, that actually goes into the net. Drewski, not gonna miss those, puts one up on the board to make sure he's in the lead. And it's funny, Mustache, most people probably don't understand what you mean by this jump, but you and I have done this at a pretty decently high level for, for a good time now, and we can just tell when players jump, like when, when you see a takeoff, sometimes you just know you're like, yep, he's on that, and, and that's what we just saw out of Drewski. Ooh, that bounce from the ceiling worked out. I thought he was gonna go for another double, but instead almost put the shot on target just because of the bounce from the ceiling. Now Drewski almost getting bumped in demo, but that one's gonna go in. A little bit of a wave dash gave that one some power. I'm curious on the speed. Yes, 82 miles per hour because of the wave dash hit. Wow, good little piece of that one there from Basilisk, and it's it's looking more and more mustache like he's going to have to go for what I like to call the disruption plays, be it demos, bumps, uh, attempting, even just attempting and forcing Drewski off his line, forcing him to dodge and be a little bit awkward. It's looking like that's going to have to be the recipe for success. Oh, yeah, he's got to be the, the the annoying ones player. We've all seen the, that that specific player. It doesn't matter what rank you're in. You you've got to be the the ball chasey type, the 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 demo type, the bump type, you know, just some of the most annoying plays you can think of. And that may just be what Basilisk needs to do as there's another shot on. Unbelievable by Drewski. Flip resets coming out all around. And just ground air, that ground air dribble was perfect. Top right corner. Off the flip reset shot there. I mean, we could continue to rave about this talent all day because it's just so impressive. 
And now, as Basilis continues to fight, oh, what a catch on the goal line, as Basilis continues to try to fight back into this, it feels like every time he's able to get it close or get it tied, Mustache Drewski again just, just takes it right back into the lead. Uh, and there's going to be a quick transition goal, but the demo coming out, and he had to. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you like the demos or not. He had to get that demo. Otherwise, that was going to be a goal for Drewski, and Basilis cannot allow that. So I know the demo haters are out there, but hey, they're needed. Speaking of needed, Basilis would needs a goal here to grab some of this momentum. But Drewski up for that one, able to play it to the side. He grabs his corner. Basilis flip is just off. They do collide though, and Drewski didn't jump. So Basilis will just be able to put this one in right over him. The aggressiveness is really starting to come out. You see that bump, that Goomba stomp really put Drewski in an awkward position. Basilisk able to turn and get that cut and put that one in. Tied up, a minute 37 left on the clock. Basilisk is keeping this close. Unfortunately, he's got to come out with that aggressive play style to do so. And hey, it's all part of the meta. So it is right in doing so. And Basilisk is going to try to go for that bump. Not going to be able to get the wave dash and the momentum, but good to keep that pressure going. Shot on, it's off target. And Drewski gonna have to sit with a few pads to see what he can do. Quick challenge, but once again, the 51 by Basilisk will grab yet another big boost of Drewski. So he'll also be able to grab mid. Drewski was camping corner. It did spawn in his favor. So that was a big pickup for him. But still having to dodge demo, still having to deal with little to no boost as in this situation. And yep, the demo going to catch up to him one more time, but Basilisk is facing the wrong direction, which will afford Drewski yet another boost camp. He did not get that boost, but he will make the save, just no boost to recover. And Basilisk taking this all the way back, allows Drewski to get that midfield in this is not an, uh, be, or this, I'm sorry, is not the position you want to be in. Your Basilisk because Drewski got that ground air dribble. Another flick coming out and some power behind it. The accuracy, though, not there. And Basilisk is just trying to keep the pressure going. He's got to put the shot on target. It is off and a little bit of slow rolling. So that gives Drewski plenty of time. And off the ceiling we go. He's going to come down, doesn't get the pogo. He's not going to be able to make the play. Why did Basilisk go for that? He's going to get oh. the bump. Basilisk, you got to turn. You got to race, but he can't get the recovery. And Drewski takes it to his own corner. Drewski just handed it to oh, Basilisk, who just missed no! the shot. Oh my goodness, we're headed to overtime. Unbelievable. And Basilisk trying to slow roll that kickoff. Drewski's going to pick up the midfield, and Basilisk taking it to the corner. Can he get this one around? He tries to go for the bump. Basilisk electing to go in mid to see what he can do. Drewski's got all the time in the world. The flick coming out, but the recovery not there from Bass. Basilisk now with a flick of his own, but Drewski's up to play it to the side. and. Basilis able to get the corner boost off. Drewski trying to keep his momentum. He's able to beat the challenge and it doesn't oh. need, oh, it does need to tap in. And Drewski was off to celebrate. Unbelievable. I honestly thought that was in about the, the post not favoring him that particular time. Basilis not going to be able to get the power needed to get that one around Drewski. Flip reset there. He's not going to go for it. He's got the dribble still. He's going to try and go for the bump. No. Remember, Drewski doesn't elect to go for the aggressive play, and Basilisk might be able to recover, doesn't get the touch. He goes for the midfield boost. Drewski's got the power, but Basilisk has the save. Oh my goodness. I wasn't too sure about that one. I knew Drewski was gonna get a lot behind it. This calculated risk does pay off. Drewski gonna have time and space and some boost. Can he end it in style? Ceiling, back down. Ground pinch is weak oh and right where Basilisk God. can save it. And so we proceed, or excuse me, we proceed and continue on here in overtime. Unbelievable. I saw Basilisk, uh, you know, backflip it and Basilisk, what happened there? He was awkward in the corner? I Did think he... he was expecting exactly what I thought is that Drewski was about to pop it and he went to free jump him. And instead Drewski snipes the top left corner and that ends our main event. Unbelievable showing by these two players. GG's all around, but Drewski coming out clutch.
saying, I didn't need the demos. I'm just going to come out here with the mechanics. And he sure did. These plays, the recoveries, the the shots, the 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 aerials, just unbelievable plays to come out from Drewski. And he's able to take this series in four. What a series, though. Basilis hung with Drewski despite all of the challenges and he even had a couple opportunities there, Mustache, to where he really could have taken advantage of the uh, of some of the kickoffs that he'd been afforded and some of the looks that he had at net. But I mean, what a, what a four game series! Indeed, I mean, you can't ask for any better main event uh, than what we just saw. So now we got to bring Top Gun in to kind of go over it, and obviously, you and Top Gun were correct in your predictions. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, uh, three three zero on the night. It's uh, looking pretty good for me. Um, congratulations to Drewski on the win. Uh, Basilisk, I mean, he definitely put up a really like a really good fight. Um, honestly, I am a pretty strong believer that often um, you can definitely outplay somebody who's really mechanical uh, with you know kind of the defense and then counterattack method. I think that's something, I, I mean, that's personally my play style. Um, but then again, I mean, I'm only like champ in ones, so I'm kind of bad at ones. So maybe, maybe I need to do something different myself and uh, work on, work on some mechanical plays. But if you voted for Drewski during prediction time, you do know now, sorry, have the opportunity to win a $50 Amazon gift card, the last one for tonight. Here is Synamic D's prize winner. Congratulations on the last uh, Amazon gift card win of the night. Exclamation point claim to get your prize. Um, wow, that was quite a series. You know, I, I actually, after the first game, I was getting kind of nervous with my <laughs> prediction, actually. I really was. He, uh, Drewski's mechanics were not coming out in full force, and Basilis was getting really, um, really forceful, honestly. He was getting very aggressive and was getting his plays and counterattacks on point. Um, and I was getting a little nervous, um, but Drewski did in fact pull through and, uh, and come back and win that series. So once again, congratulations to him and congratulations to all the winners tonight on the $50 Amazon gift cards. Um, we also have a series of a night, of the night award rather. Um, so, and what kind of happens there is it's, uh, production uh the producer chooses the series of the night and we do kind of like to get the chat involved and ask what you guys think the series of the night award um or who it should go to you know if i'm if i'm gonna make a prediction obviously yes we want you guys in chat to say who do you think what what series was the best that you guys thought obviously it doesn't matter on who won it or or how long the series was just which did you think was the most eventful or so if i'm gonna make a prediction i'm gonna say i thought the bubba stew danikins matchup was pretty good just because the flicks i mean danikins just showed up today and i was still shocked I i'm still in shock and awe from how accurate she was just unbelievable I do think it was the most, um, not in terms of how the series went, as in who won, but I do think it was the most surprising showing of uh, of all three of the series, for sure. Bolts. I, again, I'm on the same page as you guys, especially for the fact that Danny lost game number one. I mean, she went down in the series there to, uh, again, a very strong opponent against my boy Bubba Stu, and he looked really good, too. He forced her to really play that well, because if she doesn't have those flicks and she doesn't play that well, he, he walks away with the series win. So she overcame a massive, massive obstacle and a one-game deficit. Yeah, I think, uh, once again, it was a great game, or a great series, rather, and all of them, uh, every single one of them were great series. 
Um, but yeah, the series of the night, um, whenever that's chosen, the, the winners of that do get do get a bonus. So it's a it's a very nice thing to to have for sure. Uh, we do also last event. If you guys were here for um, URLC three, we did last one driving, which was a charity event, and we do have um, a little bit to go over with that um, mustache. <laughs> it was it was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I you know, it was one of our longest events we ever did. If you guys notice, uh, my voice is is back. Um, if you watch that last event, by the time we got to the end, I mean we started at like 3 p.m. Eastern and we went all the way to about this time uh, last time. So it was like six hours of streaming that we did, and pretty much I had lost my voice. So <laughs> uh, it was a long time, but boy was it fun. I'm still, you know, I still have the notes from you know last time. Uh, mittens just went on a tear, took me out, but believe me, anybody could take me out. Uh, took out four or five others. Bubba Stu came in, did the same thing. We saw Basilisk, we had Cronovi, uh, Volts, and, and Top Gun. You guys played, Tiger Queen played. I mean, just the list goes on and on of all the players that were in. It was for, uh, to, to benefit Ukraine. It was such a fun event, and it was just a pleasure to be a part of. Yeah, I think it was a fantastic event. We had so many big names come by. Uh, we got to show so more of our personalities here as well. Uh, we exited the booth alive to go down to the pitch. We had a couple guests uh, come into the booth to uh, hang with us while some of us competed on the pitch. And overall, Top Gun, it was, it was a fantastic event to be a part of. Yes, of course. And for those of you that missed it, we do have a little something to show for it. Waiting in the blue, Fisher in the orange, and two big names collide as well. Quick auto challenge, good 50 comes through, just five in the tank, and that'll be goal number one. Night Sky, oh, with a great challenge. Is this gonna be it? That is going to be it. Night Sky taking Fisher off the pitch. Gun grabbed a couple pads. Night Sky, good control. Top Gun, great. 50. Ooh. Top Gun, is that open it? net. Get there, folks. Oh, no. First kickoff didn't affect her too much. She's getting bullied by blue screen. And all right. Well, there goes Top Gun. I got donated more lives. Whoa. I was told I get to stick around. Potential flip reset. Danny, though, with the breakaway, able to take yet another life off of Derek. Perfectly on target. Derek, good pop, and finally, great save from Sadly here. Just has to beat Derek with this one in. Would love to see another kickoff goal here and really make this one a true last life 1v1. Cobain trying wow. to put it away. What a shot off kickoff. Two very talented players on the pitch. Nasty, a ton of breathing room, something you don't want to do in a great pre-jump there by Mittens. He knows better than to give tenacity that. Mittens, uh, you know, Volts, I'm not sure we've ever seen anybody last oh. with one life. With one life to play with, he has to be careful. Any missed mechanic will be an open net that he'll pay for and a quick hook shot. He can find the back of the net here. He's up for this one. 30 to play with. Reset back of the net. And I just let Mittens run Whoa. rampant on the pitch. Whoa. Mustache lined up. Not a whole lot of boost in the tank. Secret strat he had in store, but find a strat for this. Mittens up. Mittens wants the aerial and he'll find it. <laughs> Bubba Stu, so close. You got to do it because obviously I could not, and that's how you do it. Finally, we knock Mittens off. Shot turned away, Bubba Stu, big bump, and that's going to give him an opportunity, and he'll pop it over Bubba Stu. Bubba Stu will move on into that third and final round. Be in an awkward position himself as Bubba Stu's got this stuck in the corner. We all know how dangerous the corners can be. The cowboy hat has any menace to it. It's the big uh, it foam inflatable. Oh, it does. 
he uh, he's doing a decent oh, job oh. here against Pelvis too, and yeah, he's gonna he take this it. goal. <laughs> he did it! I don't care, Volts. Way to go, bud! Volts, you did it! You did better than me! That was just one more! I'm your little conscience in your ear. You can do it now! Bubba might be able to get this one! Oh, Bubba's got it. She could definitely take down the final life that Bubba has. And Mustache, she's got four to play with. A donation comes through, so Nikki oh, will have four lives. About to make it that default three to three breakaway goal. And with a big clearance, we'll have an opportunity to tap oh, this one no. in. And that's the worst bounce you could ask for. Unfortunate. Kronovi heads down to the pitch. And, you know, guys like him make, it, make me very happy that I have been eliminated from this event. Oh, but this might be the breakaway needed. That is going to be it. Kronovi will move on. The donations have come oh. through with two extra lives for Ravina. Basilisk sitting with six lives. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. Seven? seven lives. Seven lives. Get seven. It's like when you're building a snowman as a kid and you just keep uh, stacking snowballs on top. Yeah, we're down to the last little bit of competitors. This is the final segment oh, of last one driving. We can pass off the target, but that will be the final life for Ravina. We've gotten two for it, actually. Six to two is where we find ourselves. We're running at an infinite match here. Five to one is the situation that we find ourselves in and can go with the boost starvation, not going anywhere. Oh. Pasco's flying past and Ravina will put it away. Three lives to one, pass. Benefit from that extra life as he's almost finally sent Ravina packing. There it is. And so let's see what King Rainey can do as he's gonna put that one in the top left shell. It is going to be one more life for Rainey, so Rainy versus Basilisk. Let's see what they can do. All right, so Basque, great challenge, but Rainy's gonna come out with it on top and that extra life works out fast. Will be the one now knocked out. Boost and space. Prism up, Rainy. Boost, Prism reset, musty uh -huh. in. Prism's gonna look to avenge uh, an earlier URLC loss to try. Now he's got the boost gets around and that's gonna be a wide open net. Prism's not gonna be able to get there. Tries to get this one around, beats Tryon out. That one's just gonna fall right in. Seems to be the name of this game as he'll flick this one around Tryon and now both players down to their last life. Prism going for the flick. He's got around Tryon, he got the bump and Prism is able to knock down Tryon. And Prism taking the, taking the dub for the final stretch of the last one driving. Congratulations to Prism and really congratulations to everybody who played. It was thrilling no matter who you played, no matter how it went. Hello, my name is Danikins and I am going to be typing this phrase right here on the care recorder after some practice. And here we go. I'm a very slow typer most of the time. Uh, I choose to hunt and peck, as they say. It's just a little bit faster for me personally. So I definitely think uh, Caracorder is something that I'd be interested in at least giving a shot. Hello. I'm Danny Kins. The Caracorder presents an opportunity to type faster than you could on any keyboard. And this is how, oh my gosh, how fast I... So then we see this Caracorder device where it's, you know, almost like a stenographer's typewriter where you're able to use, you know, just a small amount of buttons to do numerous amount of things. Using a Caracorder. Is, you know, when you master it, I mean, it's faster than any keyboard could ever be. So if you're willing to put in the time, I, I definitely think it's something uh, that you should learn. And, you know, if I had more free time in my personal life, I think it'd be something uh, that I would truly sit down and learn. After some practice. All right. So that took a little bit, um, probably what, around 30 seconds to a minute, I'm not too sure, but it has been a challenge learning the directions and everything of the Caracorder. Um, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly though. I started practicing to, like the same lines over and over again, and I am able to pretty much 
just type it out. But it hasn't been too terribly hard to get used to. It's really fun to learn. I've had, I've had a lot of fun doing this. So that's where I'm at so far. Um, we can try it one more time. I want to try to go faster. Yeah, there we go. There you have it. That's how fast I'm able to type this with just a little bit of practice. And I haven't even learned how to actually chord it yet. So I, I could be typing words with one press, you know what I mean? Um, so I can't wait to start learning that too. And yeah, I'm really excited to see where I can go with this and how fast I'm able to type once I get used to it and learn how to learn how to chord it. So yeah, thank you for watching. Type at the speed of thought with Caracorda. Dynamic D's Game Changer with Remy RL. I will just let it play from this point where Bass had the W. I have so much to say, but not enough time to say it. This was so intense and fun to watch. Congrats to Drewski. You are truly an incredible mechanical player. Uh, it's unfortunate me and Bass couldn't get the win there. Bass played his heart out. He's an insane player too. This was just a, oh my gosh, the most fun series I've ever watched in URLC. Uh, personally, I loved watching Bass go to work. He's such a good player, but Drewski, your mechanics overshadowed it. Um, a little bit less nerves, maybe, and Bass had that dub. I'd love to see it ran back sometimes. Congrats again, Drewski. GG's. And that was Dynamic D's Game Changer. Welcome back, everyone, for final thoughts on urlc or um we did have a few fantastic matches tonight um it has been i i personally i i think this is my favorite uh, my favorite one yet in terms of the matches all the matches were even though there were sweeps all the matches were so close um we had a few ot's we um went to game three uh for the first series it's just been kind of a uh, very i don't know just very very good matchups very um even um all all the way around uh in different ways and so it's been a fantastic night for sure yeah i would definitely agree again so many fantastic matchups big names in the community and i mean i this is the first one where we really got a little bit more trash talk and i think it made things a little bit more fun so i'm hoping that some of the competitors uh continue the fun and respectful trash talk moving forward but Again, a fantastic night overall, and uh, Mustache, I, I'm assuming you agree. Oh, 100%. I mean, fantastic uh, matches. Uh, again, you know, Danikin's coming in with her crazy plays. You know, Danger Taco coming in and, and, and able to sweep his series. And then, of course, we got to give it to Drewski coming in with just the mechanics that obviously w did work out in his favor. He's able to just use that experience he has to to take down basilisk who was making a run making an attempt but just couldn't quite you know finish it out towards the end so big ggs to all these players and again to the prelims as well vaults you were a part of i mean it was such a fun night i'm always enjoying when i get to be a part of these urlc events of course you guys we do have a few things to go over before we wrap up for the night uh, like the series of the night award um and the winner of that is bubba stew versus danny kins once again they do get uh, a bonus for getting series of the night award so congratulations to both of those competitors um on their fantastic series uh that was certainly the one i was uh, kind of on the edge of my seat for i was so excited to see danny killing it out there bubba stew putting up a good fight um it was definitely wonderful i i enjoyed enjoyed watching that series very much so i'm glad that was the chosen one um once again congratulations to all the other competitors tonight though you guys all put on a fantastic show um and you guys played your heart out hearts out i know some of you were sweating some of you were nervous danger taco saying there was a puddle on his floor um but you guys all played very very well so congratulations to all of you in particular bubba stew and danny kins on the series of the night award We do also have uh, a quick mention for Caracorder, our partner. Use promo code URLC for a 10% discount. You guys saw 
Dannykin's uh, typing with it in a video just moments ago. So make sure you guys go check it out. Once again, 10% discount on your purchase. Um, we do also I, I have, have a question. Okay. Dannykin, you're in chat. If you're using that caracorder to get those flicks, I'm buying one right now. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Hey, maybe by the end of the season, or, or maybe by the end of next season, maybe by the end of URLC season, she she can do some of those sick 45s with one of those things, man. <laughs> can I'm, you imagine? I'm curious. Oh my God. That, that would be crazy. It would really be crazy. You guys, make sure you guys go check it out. All right. So not this time, but I'm going to practice <laughs> with it. Danny, listen, you got those 8,500, I don't know what you said, crazy amount of hours in rocket league hey some of those may be able to be put to good use on the care quarter nice so. guy i i like the 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 offer in mittens versus danikin's care quarter only match that would be pretty fun to watch i'm not gonna lie i do think that would be an interesting one um we do also have a quick mention uh to anchor which is the band that has been used in every single break uh that you've seen here at the urlc today Got our band man over here, Volts. Oh yeah, we are so thankful for having Anchor, yet another great cover band. There, as we talked about, they're verified on Spotify there, so simply searching Anchor with a K, A-N-K-O-R on Spotify, we'll get them to pop up. They're not verified on Apple Music, but the same tag, and then Anchor Official on YouTube there for all their covers. Again, upcoming tour. Uh, they've got some cool looking merch as well. So if you're interested uh, in any of that stuff, please be sure to check them out. Let them know on social medias how thankful we are for them uh, letting us use their music. Again, their, their music has been so great tonight on breaks in the backgrounds of some of the promo packages. They're a fantastic band. We love having them. And then uh, TikTok sensation Peyton Parrish is going to be the... Uh, is going to provide the music for us. He does some fantastic covers on TikTok. That's where he blew up at. So he'll be uh, the music for URLC5. That is awesome. We do, um, or rather, we will be saying our final goodbyes here soon. All right, I'm going to toss it to the commentary team. Fantastic broadcast team here um, to tell everyone where to find them. Um, you know, because they are fantastic casters um, and they are on multiple platforms. So I'm going to go ahead and toss it to Mustache to say his final goodbye. All right. Well, guys, uh, guys and gals, anybody out there, thank you so much for tuning in. Of course, we all appreciate it. Uh, special thanks to you guys here in the booth, uh, making it so seamless. And of course, our production behind the scenes. Uh, I got to, you know, Give it to Stone and everybody else, Remy, our coach, and then and, and Game Changer, Aficionado, and everybody else behind the scenes. Big uh, GGs to all of you that, that make this so seamless. And I want to say, again, a happy Father's Day to any fathers that are out there that will be celebrating tomorrow. And because of this, I feel like it is necessary to say a dad joke. So, Top Gun and Volts, how does a joke become a dad joke? Tell us, I, I got no idea. I'm not good no with dad clue. jokes. When the punchline becomes apparent. <laughs> I, <laughs> I had to, it's just it as cheesy. It was yeah, a good attempt. It's just as cheesy as you guys expected. But no, guys, happy Father's Day to anybody out there. I hope you guys had a lot of fun with this. Of course, I always have fun with this as well. So, Volts, you know, take it away. But man, it's just been a blast like always. It's always a blast to be here. If you guys enjoyed it, all of our Twitch names are above our heads. You can follow me specifically on Twitter at Volts on Twitch. I always tweet out where I'm casting, where I'm at, uh, what I'm doing, uh, just around around my personal life. So if you want to keep up, that's where you can find me. The next time you'll see me on the URLC5 and our, and our lovely group here as well uh, is URLC5 in July. Mittens and Cobain are the headline there. Fear and Kia is the champ division and Derek and Barney is the Grand Champ Division. So this is my final goodbye from URLC4. I'll see you in a month, and Top Gun, take us home. Yeah, of course, you guys. Um, once again, as Mustache and Volt said, we want to give a big thank you to production, um, to Remy for the Game Changers, um, you know, Mittens during the prelims, Volt's during the prelims. Uh, it's been a fantastic showing all around tonight. Thank you to the contestants. 
um, Stone for doing such a great job. Production was seamless. It was fantastic. Uh, you know, we really appreciate it. A thank you to Caracorder as well as to Anchor for allowing us to use their music. Remember that you can follow them on Pop. Okay, so go check them out. Uh, you can personally find me at Top Gun 7 on Twitch, and it's Top Gun 7 across, I believe, Instagram, um, Twitter, and then as well as Top Gun 7 on TikTok, which you guys saw one of my TikToks earlier. Um, thank you again for, for voting for that. Boop, boop, boop. I appreciate it. Um, happy Father's Day again to all the fathers, as Mustache said. And happy Father's Day to him. Um, you guys, you know, put a lot of effort and a lot of work, so I'm sure all the, all the kids appreciate it, even if they don't show it sometimes. Um, but it was a fantastic URLC4, and we appreciate all of you guys, and we hope to see you again next time. Quien se alejó de